Hey there, welcome to Start Today. We're stepping into a new season, and it's the perfect time to turn over a new leaf. Whether you're, you're setting a new fitness goal for the fall or starting a workout routine for the first time, there's a place for everybody in our Start Today community. We've got over a half million members, and it's never too late to join. Just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with other folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, our Chanel Jones takes us inside her training for the New York City Marathon. Plus, today contributor Allie Love revealing her secrets for boosting confidence. And later, we have some simple workouts, including one you can do right from your couch. This is Start Today. First, let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Monsoor, and two community members. Okay, so I want you to meet Nancy Stover McCarthy of New Jersey. Fun fact, she just told me her late mom, Dorothy, used to work here as an executive assistant here at the Today is Show. Is that not crazy? That, that is so crazy. Thank you guys for this full circle moment. Well, how beautiful it's is beautiful. that? beautiful. I love that. Okay, and by the way, I should tell people at home, I'm going to brag on you. You consistently surpassed 10 thousand steps every single Give it up for Nancy. Day. Come on. Yes. Proud of you. Thank you for joining our little club. Oh, so do you have a question for Stephanie? Yes, I do. Okay. So I've walked a 5K before, mm -hmm. but now I want to walk and run a 5K. Good. Yes, I'm proud Woo! of you. Yes. Okay. So All right. how do I prepare my body for the running part? Yes, so we're going to step it up here. And part of our training plan includes stretch and strength. So I'm going to have you hold onto this chair here for balance, Nancy. So anyone at home that needs a modification, go ahead. We're going to do some forward leg swings. Now, this is loosening up the hip flexors, which get really, really tight when you're walking or running a lot. So I want to make sure that you're incorporating. Have to do this. Yeah, you do. Try I know. And heels. <laughs> Good job, Chanel. I want to make sure that you're really loosening things up, but then for strength we're gonna hold it here in front oh, squeeze that quad good strengthen the quad for five seconds and then reach it to the back strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings this is gonna help with running that motion we need to build the quads we need to build the glutes the hamstrings so that we can move forward faster and with more power but we also got to stretch things it's out. it's a good active feel good? stretch mm -hmm. very good yes. this was yeah. great feel it well let's tell yes. everybody about Joe Joe Marrow 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 yes. Joe Marrow of Long Island New York I want to make sure I got this right. You lost 130 pounds yes. in three Woo! years? All naturally. Give it up for Joe, guys. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. And is it true that all by walking, you kept it off by walking? So cardio is, was very important for my weight loss. Um, without walking about nine to 10,000 steps a day, I wouldn't have achieved my weight loss Good goals. For you. Man, I'm so happy yes, for you. Thank you very Dude, much. That's so yes, great. Thank you. You got some for Steph? Yes. So last year, I ran my first 5K at my alma mater's homecoming, FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University. Oh, yes, I went to high school in Naples. Oh, I know wow, FGCU. that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm planning on running my second 5K next month. Yes. Do you have any suggestions or tips for me uh, for my next 5K? Yeah, you know, especially in the heat down in Florida, it is hard to, yes. you know, keep up your stamina. But one thing people forget is to stretch those inner okay. thighs. Okay. So what we're going to do is open the feet wider than the shoulders. Nice. And then go ahead and bend to one side, keeping the other leg straight. Do you feel that stretch in the inner thigh of yes. the stationary leg? Yes. Good. Good. And then yes. we're going to come Good. back through center and over the other side. And Jacob, props yeah. to you. This is dynamic stretching. We're Thank Stretching in motion here Somebody to warm up. <laughs> and notes. then we're going to hold this stretch here and turn this into a strength move. So again, strengthening the quad, the glute, but still feeling that stretch, coming through center and going to the other side and holding this strength pose for five seconds. And then alternating. That's going to help you be more loose and limber yes. so that you can run maybe faster even, break a personal Great. record, and feel better afterwards. Less recovery time when you it. do the stretching. If they can do it, you can do it at home too. Thank you, Steph. Amen. Yes. Yes. You guys, congrats. Thank you guys. Of course, Thank you. Yes. Great job. Coming up, Chanel's giving us an inside look at what it's like to train for the New York City Marathon. Then later, Allie Love sharing tips for bossing up and boosting confidence. We'll be right back.
We're back. Over the past couple of months, you may have heard our very own Chanel Jones is going to be running the New York City Marathon. Here's a look at her journey so far and the huge strides she's been making in her training. Running around is a mainstay of my day at work, at home, and even more with my kids. Running as a sport, though, that's new territory. I did not like gym class with the kids. I hated the monkey bars. I hated field day, all of that stuff. But I love a challenge, and this one's a biggie. And I'm saying, OK, you know what, Chanel? You didn't like it because it was hard. So now you need to take your 45-year-old self and do something that is really challenging. The New York City Marathon. All 26 miles, something I never imagined I'd attempt, even in my wildest dreams. So when I first started doing this, I just thought I would go outside and practice sometimes. I never really thought about really what it takes to prepare for a marathon. For help, I enlisted Nike running coach Jess Woods, who's done 18 ultra marathons. Jess has been a godsend, so she'll send me a schedule for the week. What I've learned is, Running isn't always just running. Some days you may just run for 30 minutes. Other days you'll run for a longer amount of time. But the goal is to get to 26 miles. Jess introduced me to the concept of prehab, an assessment to help improve your form and get ahead of any potential injury. There are no tubes, there are no cords. It's all cameras. And using those cameras and syncing them with the treadmill, they're able to analyze your gait, how you're running, where you're putting your weight your posture, and you're graded on your performance. And I got a C the first time. I don't get C's. I had to lean forward a little more. I had to improve my cadence. Just tweaking a few of those things, running a little bit more forward, got me from a C to a B. Initially, five miles seemed like crazy town. So now, when I'm aiming for 12 on the weekend, five doesn't seem so bad. To get those endorphins flowing, Jess and I always start. Oh. Yeah? Yes, with a warm up. Quick, pop, pop. This is nice that we're at a track today. Yeah. Because we're usually just trying to find a quiet space on the plaza. Exactly. Today's goal speed work so that my marathon pace stays consistent. This is going to be faster than your marathon pace now. Okay. We want you to get tired. Okay. Because then you're going to try and find that marathon pace again. After. On tired legs. Ooh, okay. All right. Doing it. So it feels hard, but not impossible. Right. Okay. Yes. And 203 for that lap. Seriously, who am I? Like, who am I right now? Ultimately, it's about a lot more than just running. A lot of us have things that we've always wanted to do and life gets in the way. So I am hoping that if I do this, that it will maybe trigger something in you to maybe do something as well. Um, because I think together we can do hard things. All right, let's do it. And while I still have two more months and many, many miles ahead of me, I'm grateful for how far I've come. Three, two, woo! Perfect! Get nice there. job! Woo <laughs> Marathon pace after some hard intervals. Progress. Yeah, more than a little bit of progress. That was oh awesome. Goodness. Nicely done. Yay, thank you. And like Chanel, finding the right mindset is really important when tackling a big challenge or even in our daily lives. Today, contributor Allie Love has just what we need to feel empowered and confident. I love this conversation because who hasn't been in a moment where you don't feel your most confident self? Absolutely. Sure, right? And we need a few things, a few tools in our toolbox to pull from so we can boost our confidence, whether it's a morning, a night, or a sure. day. Sure. When you say boss up, what do you mean? Oh, boss up, meaning set the standard, establish the tone, right? Okay. So set the standard means like there's no point in following the rules when you can solve real problems for real people by mm -hmm. listening and staying curious. And then establish a tone means any room or Zoom you walk in, you can affect people's energy negatively or positively. Ooh, we all like know that. this. Okay. That's so you, you have to own that. That power. True. We agree. One of the things that comes up first is the way you look. So Riley here, who looks very familiar, Hi, can y'all tell? Yeah, yeah. Susan. Savannah Sellers. Savannah Sellers. Yes, Savannah, Savannah. 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 Um, Riley's rocking a look that I think is confident. Today I wore my afro. Many of us, when we're trying to be our most confident selves, we have one or two looks that boost that inter mm -hmm. internal confidence. She has a slick back pony, a red lip, and a cat eye. So keep it simple. Keep it fierce. Keep it focused, baby. You look great. <laughs> you look great. Wow. Fantastic. You know, it's, it's funny you say that, because.
because sometimes when I feel like I need a blue, like I'll wear my three piece as opposed to, mm. you know, a sport coat because I feel like that kind of brings how you, you feel. Up. Yeah. Yes, okay. of course. All right. Sometimes how you look on the outside will affect how you feel on the inside. Yes. Let's talk about some confidence boosting content and, and we'll get to the music and what you what people listen to in just a moment. But you maintain this book changed your life. I love wow. this book, Radical Candor, Kim Scott. I think the read is a necessity. The reason for it, it really informs you how to handle yourself in your professional setting, personally and professionally, and then how to carry that with you throughout the day. Sometimes we feel less confident when we're in a meeting or when we're, our, when we're around our coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like how to speak up, yeah. how to stay focused in those moments and truly be yourself. And I think this book really, you know, gives you the tools for that. So I love it. I've read it a couple times. What about what we're listening to? Uh, a boss playlist. I mean, why not? <laughs> we're going to boss up. It's this called is, a boss playlist. It is called, called a boss playlist. The boss yes. playlist. Is this yours? Oh, yes. I made this playlist oh, this specific, specifically for all of you. Yeah, it's um, on yes. This is all our women empowerment music. This you can like do it for, chart. for your walking in the morning, Al. Hot mm -hmm. girl walk, Craig. I know you love a hot girl walk. I do. I do. <laughs> Craig does <laughs> a hot girl walk. On the tread, on the Peloton but oh. this this is music that really reminds you of who you are, okay. and I love it. Yeah. So you Janet put Jackson in boss too. playlist on Spotify? Yes, on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Lauren Hill. Yeah. I this is it. a great playlist. Okay. You know, I remember in the '70s there would be these posters on walls like a cat on a on a limb hang in there. <laughs> uh, but you, you've got a more modern version of this. I do. I think what you feed yourself internally is so important. We talk about this all the time. And so these are some of my favorite quotes. If not now, like if not you win, if not now win. And I think it's like, it's a reminder that you are important and, mm -hmm. and that you are here and you can do this. Um, another thing that I always say, work the quirk. This is a little quirky, so don't judge me, folks. Okay. It's called, what do you call it? Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Okay. Anytime you need a confidence booster, look at photos of yourself, photos of you and your friends. It reminds you of who you are in the public eye. Like, Ooh. how do you, how does the world see you? And so it sounds weird to look at yourself, but go through your no. photos That's and look at your pictures in your office. Of our, yes. Of our yeah. pictures. And you do too. Yes. I, in fact, I have a. If you go in my dressing room right now, yes. Al Roker's picture is. There you go. Door. I mean, who, who doesn't want to? That reminds you of what you don't want to be. <laughs> no. And you know what? I will say this. This little what you, um, you know, the quotes Same. and stuff like that. I grew up with them all over the house. My yeah. mama put them in the bathroom, so yeah. I feel like it was good for her. But it was good for me as a yes. teenager too to see these things when you're I left feeding the house. yourself. You're absorbing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my last thing, which is really, really important, uh -huh. is when you need a confidence booster, okay. text your friends and have them remind you of who you are. Oh. So I've texted my friends Emma Lovewell or Sierra and just say like, I need a, I need a moment. Can you just help me? Like I'm like, hey, hype moment, come through for me, sis. Oh. And she does. And these are just like, they'll send me a text message. That's a great idea. A hype moment. And, and I have a, a little uh, surprise for oh. all three of you. Okay. okay. All right. So, Al, you're up first. Now, okay. you're good at reading the teleprompter. I saw you on your live this morning. Um, so, let's go ahead and read. Can you see that? We're going to oh, roll wow. this teleprompter. Oh. Al, who is this from, Al? That's from Jim Gaffigan. It's, in, it's Age of Anger, Ego, and Artificial Intelligence. You're an unsung hero. Everyone has struggles and heartbreak, but you seem to embrace every moment. Oh, so With nice. authentic kindness. The world needs more Al Rokers. Please don't end up being a serial killer <laughs> because that would make me look stupid. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Jim. <laughs> but thank you. That's awfully That's nice. So He's such not, a not just Al Craig. Take a look. Well, well, Whose text am I reading? Oh, this is my oh, younger yes. brother. That's beautiful. Read it. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. hey, man. God broke the mold when he made you. Your understanding and compassion for others is something most don't know. Wow. Uh, I love to watch you when you work because your love and passion for your craft is absolutely remarkable. If we were in person, we would raise a glass of bourbon, but... Here's to you, my friend. Continue to knock it out of the park, bro. Oh, wow. Cool. Does that that's make you lovely. feel good? Almost made me cry. Yes, yes. Okay, here you go. Oh, Jeez. That is so sweet, so sweet Alan. And Chanel, of course, for you. Oh, oh Dylan. Dylan. Oh, that's so sweet. Dear Chanel, your laugh brings me so much joy, and your zest for life is infectious. Thank you for knowing me so well. Oh. Our friendship is truly special. Oh, yes. That's texting, a great idea. Yes, you, texting Alan. your friends and family to remind you of who you are is the biggest confident booster. So I hope some of these tips, again, in your toolkit, you can pull from yeah. at various moments in your life. And you can be there for others. Thank that's you. Just, that was great. What a great idea. Thank you, Alan. Up next, we're going to show you some low-intensity exercises to help your body recover after a workout. Plus, some simple moves you can do while lying down. Just lay down, because we'll be right back after these messages.
And welcome back. Like most things, exercise is all about balance. Sometimes it can be tempting to skip rest days, especially when you're making progress and you want that momentum to keep going. Well, Nike Master Trainer Joe Holder recently walked us through some low intensity workouts to help make the most out of your rest days. So okay. We're going to talk about active recovery. Okay. Uh, I'm training for a marathon right now. It's amazing. You Just like too. Chanel. I know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a trick here. In active recovery, we often use lower intensity workouts to help us feel better. Yeah. But you can also use this in daily life. Okay. Low intensity workouts, three times a week, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Both increase energy and reduce fatigue, people say. Oh, okay. So we're okay. going to start okay. with jump rope. Okay. And this is what we're going to do show you some different ones. Let's jump rope. All Come right. On. When's the last time we let's jumped rope? Jump rope, Chanel? Yeah, let's go. Um, like when I was in fifth grade. So there we oh, go. Look at that. Oh. This is an oh, easy one to you. <laughs> nice and simple. Look so I'll you. do it instead. So you would jump rope, uh -huh. yes. and you would put it down. And how and long will you do a that? Body weight exercise. So you okay. go one minute jump rope. So play like I did that. One minute right, body fine. weight. Uh -huh. Yep. And it's nice and easy. You do that for ten rounds. Low intensity. You should you do be doing that so very rapidly. I should rapidly. be able to talk for it. Yes. Yeah. But I could talk. My heart rate is well, good. Well, yeah, that's good. He's good. <laughs> Another one we got is foam roll. Now okay. you come with me. All right. So we're gonna sit here. Easy way. Okay. So again, remember, a lot of people. To sit here, complain of sore muscles or fatigue. Right. That's why they don't improve their health. Okay. But this is a super simple one to be able to do that. Siri's interested in Siri's what you're saying. Siri's interested. Yes. Yep. So we roll there. Okay. Nice and quick. Maybe get the hamstring. Good. You make it look so easy. Your, <laughs> you, your limbs are so much longer than mine. Let me stand up. Okay. This is what we got. So after you do that, then yes. you just give me a nice dynamic exercise. So hug the knee to the okay. chest. Okay. So we go one muscle group on the foam roll one minute. So Joe, is, is there a way to, to modify that if you've got like knee problems? Yeah, this one, knee, uh -huh. yeah, and nice and easy. All you have to do, maybe just move across the body. Uh -huh. We're just working ranges of motion. So Al, I got this something for you. Good. It feels good? Yeah. One team, like one dream. Yeah. I got <laughs> one something team, for you. All right. <laughs> okay. We call this weighted aerobics. Okay. So nice and easy. You could just find some weight. Uh-huh. You could maybe give me a curl, All right? right let's you go. give me a lateral raise. Oh, Come okay. On. Give me that Long curl. limbs. There we go. That's a <laughs> lateral He's got a wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the push press. Okay. Good. Oh. And then okay. we just cycle through exercises. Just keep going. Yep. Uh -huh. For about 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Take 15 seconds off. Repeat that. 10 or so rounds. And and even if you can't do heavier heavier weights, like canned can goods, yep. things like that? Exactly, because remember what we said, low intensity. Low, low intensity. And guess what improved energy better, uh, low intensity than actually medium? Really? So, yes. All right. Active okay. recovery. So if you do that real quick, bang, 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 minutes, minutes, that's, that's all you go. need. So that's my, fa my takeaway, right. one team, one dream. One team, one dream. <laughs> Just ahead, we've got two more workouts for you, including exercises, I love this, you can do from your couch. We'll be right back. We're back with more Start Today workouts. First up, Peloton instructor Tunde Oyunane stopping by the third hour to share some simple ways to tone arms and core. 
first of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. And tell me what it means. First of all, that's next level. That's um, but for all of you guys to be highlighted in a group of women who are changing how we think about fitness. It's not just leg warmers and doing grapevines. You know, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But you guys are so forward thinking. Well, it's incredible to be here. Last time I was here, I was celebrating the launch of my book, Speak. And now to be one of six incredible women featured as the forces of fitness for amazing. women's health. It feels pretty surreal. I was picked on and teased for the way that I looked as a kid. And this shoot was for younger Tunde to be celebrated mm -hmm. in my body mm -hmm. for my flaws and all. It all, and all, it is for every single person who has never felt comfortable in their own skin. Oh, I love really that. incredible. Love well it. Said. I know. All right, so you're going to show us uh, by jumping right into this workout. We've got some yeah. fans, NBC staffers. Uh, so let's just get to it. All right, so this is a quick 10 minute workout that you can do at your home for arms and core. All you need is music and some dumbbells. We're going to start right, okay. with grab your weight. We're gonna start with our arms and then we'll finish this workout on the floor. We're gonna go from into some bicep curls to hammer curls. So in a bicep curl, your palms are facing up towards your shoulder and then you're gonna come back up and flip your grip so that your palms rotate and face inward on the way in. So this is a really great way to maximize on time, targeting both heads of your biceps. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. And in a I'm, suit, I'm, I'm wildly impressed. Yeah. Does it matter how heavy they are? So I would recommend anything from about five to 20 pounds. We're working with a little lighter dumbbells today. I don't wanna break too much of a sweat in our, our beautiful attire, but I, I'd recommend about 10 to 20 12 okay. um, of the bicep to hammer curl. From there, we're gonna go into an overhead extension. This is gonna target oh, the good. back, this, yeah, now you feel it. Ooh. This is gonna target the back of your arms. So make sure to keep your elbows rotated in, almost framing your hairline, wonderful. And Tunde, how far do you go back when you do this? I'll try this at home sometimes and try to figure out like, what's the right point? You're killing, I would say you wanna keep your hips tucked. You so it, once I you start it. to I notice feel, that yeah. your hips are flaring, maybe you're going back a little bit too far. I should start working out of my dressing room. I know, Strategy. Right, you start to feel yeah. it quickly, right? Yeah. Even the light dumbbells will attack you too. Yeah. So same thing here, about 10 to 12, uh, before you move on to our final arm movement, which is an L raise. So this is gonna target your shoulders, specifically the front and sides of your shoulders at the same exact time. Mm. Core stays strong, I hips know. stay tucked. To, like, you know nice, what? Right? It's Staggering. one of those things where we have no excuse because you can do this at home. You can you know do I mean? it at home, you yeah. can do it at the airport, you can yeah. do it while you're waiting for your laundry to, to dry. I say create a playlist, three to four songs, and again, you can bang this out really quickly in a matter of 10 minutes. So we're gonna put okay. our dumbbells down. So those, those first three movements, 10 to 12 reps three times through. Okay. We're gonna finish out with some core. Now, uh, advanced version, you can hold on to a dumbbell. Feet are planted on the ground. We're going into a Russian twist. We're gonna twist from right to left. So from side to side. Now, Ooh. if you're like my guy Peter, who is on his Peloton just about every single day, That's a, this is easy well. for him. And so Peter and I, we're gonna pick our heels up off the ground. Was this a progression to this see movement. If I can do this. Very nice. Ooh, yes. Working from side to side. You know who's appreciating you saying that? My wife, who knows that is not. <laughs> who knows that is not true. You gotta wear the the badge, right? The Peloton badge. Oh, girl, how long are we supposed to? So do we're this? here for 30 seconds. We're gonna fast forward. Seconds. This, this is like a yeah. This is a fake 30 Five. seconds. You're gonna set your dumbbells down. We're gonna go to, into our last and final movement, a hollow hold. So back is completely flat on the mat. It's so flat that even an ant couldn't crawl mm. underneath you. So we're gonna pick our left foot up. Nice. You can tuck your hands underneath your booty. Mm. Right heels come off the mat. Head, neck, and shoulders lift off the mat. The higher your feet, the easier this will be. Oh. The lower your heel to the <laughs> ground, the more challenging this is. And we're gonna hold this. We're gonna light our fire. We're gonna hold okay. this for 30 How you seconds. Doing? Okay. Walk up, say so you. So we have a we have like a commercial. <laughs> I want tough. one of those milkshakes. No one was. Why was I offered the milkshake? The milkshake sitting for three, good. for two, and one. Sit it up, everybody. Great job. I think I'm stuck. How do you feel? I actually feel really good. <laughs> that feels right? good. It's like I we did that. something. I Hopefully know. you did it with us as well. Thank I you so we, much. I hope we got another <laughs> milkshake. Love that. Our workout Woo. partners, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. And if you're feeling a little extra lazy, we've got a workout you can do from the comfort of your couch. Here to show us how it's done, trainer Vicki Justice. The point of this workout is that it can be done by anyone, anywhere, anytime. All it's right. a few minutes long and it makes you feel just so good in okay. just a few minutes. What's I love the first it. workout? So the first exercise, I'm we are like, gonna- I wanna do whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, She's not like working out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so Vicky, you were saying, what, what's, what's the first one? We gotta lay on our side. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
So, for the first exercise. <laughs> I'm following her around everywhere. Like, when well, I see you let her go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> laughing is also good for your abs. Thank That's you. true. <laughs> okay. When so I for the first laughing. exercise, Al, you want to be careful with your head. Okay. We are going to do side leg raises. Okay. So staying with your core tight, you're going to raise your leg up just a bit, not too high, okay. come back down. So this works your glute medius, which is the upper outer part of your booty, and your Good TFL. Well, this is medius. So this is, and really and truly, if we're watching something on TV, mm -hmm. you yes. can almost just do this while Absolutely. it passes the time. Okay. Exactly. How many times should we do this? Like 12 to 20 reps. It just depends on your own fitness level, uh -huh. but you don't have to go too high. <laughs> okay. What's another lower body one? Uh, another lower body one is a clamshell. So you want to put your legs together like okay. this. Mm -hmm. Keeping your heels together, you're gonna open your knee up like this, back down. You should feel this one in your glute maximus. Some producers gonna lose their job on this one. This is absolutely. Okay. Well, well this one some is producer great. didn't make you wear one size too small. <laughs> How about we okay. move on to the upper body? <laughs> okay, upper body, we're gonna be seated so we can, okay. you know, you guys can come up on the couch. Oh, okay. everybody up. <laughs> such a we jack. can be more mature about this. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Sorry, thank you, Miss Vicky. Vicky. Sorry, Vicky. Okay. So, we're gonna start off with robot arms. So, you're gonna put your arms up like this. Make sure your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Okay. And all you're gonna do is bring move. your arms like this and up. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> Kind of like you. those cats you see in the Chinese restaurant. Oh, yes. Sure. <laughs> it has a new name. Yeah, exactly. But this is great for your shoulders, for your mobility, Look for you, your I'm upper sorry. body. And honestly, I feel it. And how, how many times do you do this one? Same thing, like 15 to 20 times. Okay. And this is great because you can do this at your desk when yeah. you're at work. Just, I mean, your coworkers might be like. And how okay. about a good, a good core exercise? Core exercise. We're going to do some lean back marches. You oh, want to lean back lean just back. a little bit okay. until you feel your abs engage. Okay. Oh. You're going to bring one knee up and switch. This is good. And again, yeah. if you're watching, let's say, a 30-minute show, you can get all of these Exactly. In. And these yeah. are so easy that you don't really have to abs. think okay. about them that much. You yeah. Honestly, if you're show. watching TV a couple times a week or whatever you're doing and you could do this and get this in, Vicky, it's not bad. You. And I want to apologize formally for my friend Al. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan the QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Today All Day. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Oh, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my God, I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all around superstar, Drew Barrymore and her chef BFF, Pilar Valdez, are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Good. Wow, this Boom. Was... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's Don't not a competition. Mad. Look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> Look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half. That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so juvenile? <laughs> When are we going to turn 14? I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to lob off the top of it. We're going to just take off the dark green. Mine doesn't look anything like yours so does. So what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't, um, you took off, you were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. 
Um, but our first stop was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. And now are we keeping it off. this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon, and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. I feel good about this part. Yeah. That looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your rind, rind basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're going to... Flip it over so it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to tuck in those. I like digits. to cut like this. I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I like to off. And this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's What's the pretty difference chunky. between dicing and mincing? So size. The, absolutely. Size, <laughs> size matters. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pim's. It's based on a Pim's cup, which is usually with gin. But this one oh, is without. Way, you would never know there was an alcohol in <laughs> here. Oh my gosh. Drew what loves, is that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer and Drew, I know you love tea, so it's a combination of black and rooibos. Okay. That's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. so good. All right, so wait, what All do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, so Anna, three quarters cup that. water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got mm -hmm. it. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the honey equal bear. parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain yeah. yes. ratio to remember. Yes. Yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or are you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. It's yeah. like, then you have to work harder to get the solubility. If you shake it in, I feel like it's just a better That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is half on top. Half teaspoon. Half seed. teaspoon of fennel Please. seed. Honey, lovely. Sprinkle on in. All right, you got crazy. <laughs> half usually. teaspoon uh, coriander There you go. I'm and we're going to do half a teaspoon of the cumin. Oh. And then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the pink peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh. Savannah, have you had pink peppercorn? No, I have before? not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're peppery. not super, a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. boss. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of she knows water. Me too well. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have tried. Right. You're just to pouring it. it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is going to be good to go. Like so freshness. easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. Quick.
Now we're moving on to the pistachio dukkha component of our salad. Okay. Dukkha is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander. seed. Mm -hmm. Two, teaspoons Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is this, is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay, mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm Absolutely. going off. Oh. Oh. Okay, then it's She's one, rogue. One quarter so cup of sesame seeds. Hold, hold on the sesame oh. seeds, actually, Savannah. So you're going to toast that Can we first. turn it up? How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay, Okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it. And you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um, and you're gonna notice a change in color. They're gonna start to get a little darker, but really what you're looking for, Savannah, is the smell. Okay. It's gonna start to like release this like toasty smell. You're gonna smell the coriander. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very floral. It's starting. Can you smell yeah. it? Yeah. Let's give that a shake, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. I can. Ooh, I like it. And yes. on the average, would you say about two minutes, Kalar? About two minutes, okay. yeah. Take it off, because okay. I can see a okay. little bit of heat. Let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the Don't pan. Just... Okay, yeah. now what? Um, and you're gonna divide, actually, the spices between your and Drew's mortar and pestle. Habsy, habsy. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash immediately, I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, it's yeah. gonna like firework spices Okay, so I'm like everywhere. just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine grain? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the dukkha, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture. So you'll have fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. So I'm happy mm -hmm. with where mine is at. How do you like mine? What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, Lovely. Okay. That's good. good. Yeah. That's and nice. I think you, you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a texture. Yeah. Yes. Play on I texture. I went hard, you went soft. Oh. Well. So now we're going to toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little, you can use the spatula. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. <laughs> While Savannah is uh, toasting the sesame seeds, Drew, I'm going to have you add in um, our salt. Our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's a Wine. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on salts. top of my chocolate chip cookies. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. I did not. <laughs> I have a little baking skill. And then Drew, you're going to do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds. Two tablespoons. And hemp seeds. Savannah. Yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. Okay. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, a pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, a smidge, smidge, smidge of black pepper. Okay. Smidge. That's more that, than that's a smidge. Plenty. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot, <laughs> I love hot pepper. spicy tongue. <laughs> Everything okay. could be coated and rubbed in pepper. All right, do you think we're good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. <laughs> um, but we need music. All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Dump them yeah. in? Dump it in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like style. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. So we're, we've established this a is a really good combo. <laughs> we're going to scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're gonna give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind there. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. Okay, that looks amazing. Yeah, and I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. 
So just take a little. Take a little, and and then we can sort of play from there. So、mm. it's gonna be, it's gonna have that floral from. I、yes. like it. I wouldn't、yes. change one thing. Would you? It、it's、has、perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. <laughs> All right, success, ladies. The love story continues. <laughs> we made duka. We're gonna assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's gonna be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. And then. <laughs> Let's go. You guys got this. All right.、Okay. So in your little jar、um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little. So just give them a little shake.、Mm-hmm. It emulsifies it, which is ever、go. so important.、Drew. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first. It'll taste fifty times better. Wrap、okay. in your knowledge. All right. So in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula.、So、I like to coat. A little bit of the bowl. I know it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But、You're、I'm not going to use to, all of that. No, no, you don't have to, and you dress the taste. But when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building.、Okay. So a little arugula on the plate. Remember, we're、oh. making something beautiful. Okay. okay. Arugula on the plate. This is where the composition.、Comes. Yes. Okay. So、and、what's our next one? Your watermelon slices. You're going to dip it in the duka. Oh, dip it in the duka. And however you want to <laughs> dip it is up to you. And you're gonna lay it yeah, on you, the plate. Yeah, you duka you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices, and、oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duka, just so that it has that freshness, and then you'll get the pop. Oh, so some、crunch. duka and some don't. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I'm actually asking. I feel like this should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. This is cheesy, like Rodney Dangerfield. By the way, the best. Okay. Here, there's no rules. Okay. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. How can I win? What if I make like a tower? I know. You can totally way, make、I'm、a tower. Thinking of tower. Little like Jenga. Okay. And then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also,、okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. I learned from little、that. salt bay maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we? Oh,、uh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera. Yes, last. <laughs> I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> This looks very pretty. Really? It, it really does. I like I your th- little tower. I feel like they're both they're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three extremely different, different approaches. <laughs>、yeah. You went like just. Put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a、um, a, a, a Lanes, strategic、right? pattern. Yeah. No, it does. And yours is sort of abundant,、mm. and mine is amount. I love it. All, All right. right, shall、Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let,、oh, Cheers, guys.
one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's I... gonna devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. <laughs> All right, we've but got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Did, did we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I, salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So Drew, what I'm gonna have you do actually is season the shrimp. So that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're gonna sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Season it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg learned. wash. I'm there shimmying my salt. No not dumping, dumping over here. <laughs> no, not anymore, I'll never dump a again. Little. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of brownness. And you're gonna spin it, we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but. Well, the, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball. I so I'm gonna try. Eyeball. I think this is. One tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? That's really, really great. And then you're just gonna rock Our it. Our baby's all grossed <laughs> up. <laughs> She's eyeballing! Oh, no. yeah, I eyeballed. Okay. Okay. And what you're gonna do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat no. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You, you know, know she again. does. Miss Spicy over she, she likes. It's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in. You can start pulling. Okay. Um, you do this. So we were just whoo, um, infusing the olive oil mm, basically with that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? Throw this in. You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just all dented okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, do but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single single layer, okay. and you're not gonna stir it, you're gonna shake it, you know, lay occasionally, it down. lay it down, yeah. Actually, will you hold, Savannah? You don't think it's hot enough? Yeah, so. Stand back. How are you, what are you looking at to there. know if it's so hot enough? So you want a, a little bit of ripple, you do not want smoke, we're not okay. like, trying no. to, and no bubble. <laughs> Wait, let me you want this. that sizzle and you're not getting Oh yeah, it. I'm definitely wanting, I can see it a little bit here. Let me, can I borrow that? There you go. Here you go. There oh. you go. There you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, here you go. I stepped away. <laughs> Everything started functioning. <laughs> Meanwhile, my arm is gonna fall off. Um, holding these. Oh uh, yeah. Shrink. That. You know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a decade. That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear this. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about talk about cooking. You know, like smell and what you can see. I'm mm. always like. I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in the that. strongest sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. Its and tails are already it. pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That was so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You well, don't mess with them. Don't not string, yeah. them. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go different, in different spot. There moving you go. Different neighborhood. Yeah, because it does. You know, some stuff will have to be fine. I know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two. Beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. Right. You touch it with your finger right now, 
You see how firm, firm it is? Yes. Is okay. that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out. Leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, they're basically like That's almost it. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually, speaking of pasta, stir. forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try and nude. No, very far. Nowhere All near. Right. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like, it's gonna, pencils? Sure. Uh, that's great to No, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> the yummy yes, bits. The, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. I um, love totally. that. All right, you're gonna do um, not the, all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yes. That's impressive. Four. All right, and that goes into the pan. Look at it. Yeah. This is hey, right here. Duty. This is graduate school. <laughs> We're going to dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're going to let this go. I want you guys to taste it where it is. There's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. So have... there's no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine. Right. Oh. And that's going to reduce in color. Oh, my. What God, do you think? Oh, it's incredible. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna come in. Mm -hmm. What's and this, lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not gonna do all of it because I wanna do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there, okay. I think. What do you think over there? Uh, that, that, no, not done. Still not Although, done? Well, actually, I'd like Pilar to test this because- Happy to. Noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this might something. actually be almost Pretty good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah. Yeah. Almost there. Should I turn it down so more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. It's really going crazy yeah. here. And how's that here sounding now, Pilar? Yeah. <laughs> now we got That's it. That's the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What'd like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yes. I forget everybody. And then tuck them so under you see it. Oh. Basically. oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> Always I like your today show pasta theme. Water. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. So yes. I know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like you okay. can go slow and you're going to do a rough Because it's ready. Drew reports that the pasta is All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're going to start putting that pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's Ooh. totally fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just going to make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, is, this looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more of pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little, saved it, a Drew? A little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're gonna kill the heat. Okay. Done. And then you're gonna garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't wanna go crazy, right? Just a little like that? Just a, just a little for color and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's, with the, the shrimp oh gosh, is. It looks so good. Perfect. <laughs> like wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for you. Okay. Yeah, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, because this thing weighs six billion pounds. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Okay, look. I think we did pretty good. Cool. Oh, yes. I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow, and then you. By the way, roll. I feel like you should lie in King Yacht now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili okay. flake, lemon. Okay. Garnish. Love it. Garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those. Let's go. Yeah. Guys, shall we? Let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it.
so beautiful does this look? I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really, shall we? Yes. Okay. Please. My first Dooku. I've never had a Dooku before. Dooka. The Dooka. <laughs> exactly. It's so good. Mm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. In the back of the palate and through the nose. Mm. But mm. it's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little floral. A little... Listen, Ooh. I love that pickled rind. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon rind. I'm really excited that you're saying that. Me too. That to this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So I want to show you um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little shrimp in there, for you. I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the. God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that. Um, like a fork I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. There you go. should work much nicer. Do you wanna nest there me? you go. I wanna nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kinda dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, And fancy then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third All right, time I need third, a charm. Third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. okay. So. Let's see. I oh no, move. you're nesting. Oh, there That's you your go. best go. nest yet. There you see? go. See, third time's the charm. Gonna, oh, and that then, is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, there you go. Go. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp like perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture. So it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. Can we raise a glass? To a friendship. To a friendship. To a friendship. Cheers. Good morning, good to see you. Welcome to The Boost. We are here to start your day off with a boost of positivity. And we're gonna start with the family of groundbreaking entertainer and civil rights activist, Harry Belafonte. He passed away in April and they're working to carry on his incredible legacy. NBC's Morgan Radford sat down with them to learn about their mission and how they're healing and honoring Belafonte's memory through action. Harry Belafonte struck a chord with his signature Calypso song from the 1950s. His career spanned over six decades, solidifying his place in Hollywood from roles in films from 1954's Carmen Jones to the 2018 hit Black Klansman. But the Tony, Emmy, and Grammy award-winning performer ultimately prioritized activism over stardom, forming a bridge between Hollywood and the civil rights movement, marching in Washington 60 years ago and fighting for equality his entire life. Who did you see sit at this table growing up? Celebrities, political luminaries, Dr. King. David Belafonte crisscrossed the globe with his trailblazing father for nearly five decades, and after having a front seat to that history, now looks that to expand upon that work in his own way. Still? Tell me about the Belafonte Family Foundation. We took what was a lifetime for me of experiences in the home, in the professional realm, and put it into a vehicle that might help communities that are generally underserved. <laughs> His wife, Milena, 20-year-old daughter, Serafina, and 16-year-old son, Amadeus, complete the court think tank focused on health, education, and social justice. How do you all make that mission a reality? We have multiple pillars, social justice and wrongful incarceration. That was very much Harry's area, but Serafina is very much involved in that. We have the youth, anxiety and bullying. That's very much on Amadeus's mind. I am particularly interested in mass incarceration and wrongful incarceration in the criminal justice system and particularly creating this program which is still in the works. You can get lawyers who would volunteer their time that would literally hop on a truck and go to underserved communities to give legal advice that a lot of people don't have access to. And Amadeus, what about you? When I was younger, I got bullied a lot and so one like idea that 
we had was kids that are getting bullied at school can go to a community online where they can play their favorite video games and talk with people the same age and who have gone through similar struggles. Beyond these future goals, the foundation is currently helping by mentoring kids through a martial arts program and awarding scholarships, all to honor Harry's legacy. We are taking all of this that he instilled in them and in us and in bringing it into the world moving forward. What do you want the world to know about your grandfather? He was an amazing man who like broke so many barriers. He was able to go throughout life in such a unique way while doing so much and still caring about his family. He really did his best to show up for us in a way that he couldn't for his children. He was very passionate about the cause and about his work. We miss him every day and he was really funny. I remember vividly being four years old and he goes, hey Serafina, look at this. And he starts to lick the plate. Oh wow. The ice cream. And he's like, you have to do it after every meal. So I started doing that. After thinking every meal. <laughs> that was what was needed. Yeah, he was definitely fun. I've had some of the biggest laughs with your grandfather. Despite sweet memories, David says his father was a complicated man. What he came from, from nothing as an abused child and out in the world way too young on his own. He brought to the table, I think, the best that he could as a father. And then certainly grew in to be a forward-facing champion of so much. This is your dad. He's passed away. How are you doing? For me, I know, I know what I had with him. I know where he disappointed me. I know where he amazed me. There's not a day we don't miss him. For a list of reasons. But there's a very steady, even keel of inspiration and motivation to do this. So we're putting that into the work because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Now to a fascinating story about a CEO by day who strikes a much different tune at night. NBC's Ann Thompson found out how he is chasing his musical dreams. Everything connects. It's not unusual for a musician to have a side hustle. Another job that pays the bills between gigs. <laughs> Though each note he plays from his album not enough, not enough. and the words he wrote energizes him, ba, 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 ba. Eugene Woods kept his worlds separate. That changed during the pandemic when um, sort of these worlds came together. His friends call him Gene, and his day job is in a hospital. Well, actually, 67 of them across six states as CEO of Advocate Health. Have you ever been stopped by a patient who said, I've heard your music? Well, I have, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite, you know, heartwarming for them to actually pay that much attention because we're trying to pay <laughs> attention to them. Advocate Health, based in Charlotte, North Carolina, is the nation's third largest nonprofit hospital system. Gene oversees 150,000 employees and 6 million patients. Does music help your day job? Leadership and music are connected in really amazing ways. Sometimes what I do is more like a conductor of a classical symphony, where everybody has these orchestrated parts. During the pandemic, it was more like leading a jazz band. You know, because you really, uh, it's about improvisation. We can work it out Does it calm you down or, or does it energize you? What's, it, what's the impact of music on you? It grounds me. Uh, you know, it's sort of my meditation. And it, I think it allows me to be a better leader because I come to the job with a different sensibility. Gene's American-born father loved jazz. His mom, a native of Spain, flamenco music and dancing. Just kind of seeped into to my DNA. And I think that's really in part responsible for me being a musician. I just heard it every single day. It was, a, it was the soundtrack of our lives. Growing up in Spain, where his dad served in the US Navy, Gene's uncle introduced him to the guitar. His parents bought him one when they moved to Philadelphia. It wasn't until years later that I found out my father forwent three months of rent to buy me a guitar and an amp. And to this day, it's the best investment in my education because they couldn't afford college. His musical ambitions nurtured in garage bands. 
high-paying gigs at Penn State help finance his undergraduate and master's degrees. The public performing stopped as he climbed the corporate ladder in healthcare, but Gene kept playing and writing in his off hours. Music has never left my life. Now fronting Gene Woods and the Soul Alliance. He plays with musicians who back James Brown and John Mayer in a studio owned by Grammy-winning producer Glenn Tabor. It doesn't matter where you come from and who you are and what your day job is. You either bring it or you don't. Yeah. And and Gene brings it or these guys wouldn't be. Your brother is in chains, we should. Singing into the microphone Prince used to record Purple Rain, Gene has found life's elusive equilibrium an album, music videos, and the corner office. People talk about work-life balance. I talk about really work-life harmony um, because I think when these pieces come together you, and integrate, you can be, I think, your, your, your whole selves, your best selves. When we come back, the property lovers share their love for each other, home renovations, and their flourishing family. Coming up after this. You probably heard of the property lovers. They're YouTube stars who went from renovating homes to building a remarkable life together. Well, now they're sharing their story with the whole world. And Chanel Jones caught up with them. It took a while to get here, but we're both proud of who we are. And we're proud to be a same-sex couple raising children. PJ and Thomas McKay's love story began more than a decade ago in their hometown of Cleveland, Tennessee, when they met at a party. I was like, this guy is pretty cool, but... I think it was like a year or two later that we reconnected over Facebook and we started hanging out the next day. We both were like, we could see this going somewhere. And in October of 2015, they officially tied the knot. You may kiss your husband. Shortly after getting married, the couple began documenting their life and love for home renovation. We're actually gonna take you guys along with us as we renovate this bathroom capturing the hearts of hundreds of thousands of fans across social media. We had no idea that it would turn into um, a profession. It was just more about sharing our lives and then it kind of turned into something else entirely. What kind of feedback have you received over the years? We have a whole uh, bulletin board that PJ made full of letters from people all over who have written us and shared a little bit about their lives and how our lives connect. People have especially connected to the couple as they've opened up about their path to parenthood. Along the way, you talk about the fact that you had this idea of growing your family. How did you navigate that? Well, we always knew we wanted kids. We just didn't know how to go about it. There was just something that was pulling us towards foster care. We're gonna be doing foster care classes for the next nine weeks. We were hesitant because we are in a homosexual relationship, but what sexual orientation you are, the color of your skin, none of that matters as long as the kid is going to, uh, to a good home. In 2019, PJ and Thomas became foster parents, opening their home to three young siblings. 
Alan, Raya, and Anna. How old were they when you first got the kids? They were four, two and a half, and 18 months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd never changed a diaper in my life. We went from zero kids to three kids overnight. There's so much uncertainty in foster care because there are mounds and mounds of paperwork, check-ins from the caseworkers. Our court dates kept getting pushed back because of COVID. It was an emotional journey. For us, we really just tried to focus on the fact that no matter how long the kids were going to be with us, that we could change their life in a positive way. And in August of 2021, the McKays became a forever family, adopting the three young kids. What does a good day look like in your household with three little ones? It usually involves a trip out to our farm that we are fixing up. The kids love it out there. And then dinner around the table. We're super big on creating those moments together as a family. In their small southern town, the McKays admit not many families look like them, but say their community has been so welcoming. I was outside on our front porch and our mailman came up and he said, oh, is that your husband? Are those y'all's kids? And I said, yes, we adopted them. And then he shared with me that he grew up in a very conservative Christian home. He just said, you know, Jesus loves you guys, I love you guys, and I think that's wonderful. It was a really special moment. And for PJ and Thomas, it's a reminder that family, no matter how it's made, is everything. Picture this, young PJ, young Thomas are here right now. What would they say? about the life that you've built? Well, young Thomas would say, number one, I don't believe it. And number two, that this is kind of what I always hoped it would look like. Young PJ would be like, I just want to speed it up to get to, to where we are now. Our next story spotlights a modern day trailblazer. Meet the midwife helping moms to be get affordable care and empowering her community when it comes to women in healthcare. Here's Chanel once again. My name is Brittany Chu Kelman. I'm a certified professional midwife and the executive and clinical director of Jamaa Birth Village. Jamaa means family in Swahili. We're really centered on culture and heritage. For Brittany, her nonprofit clinic in Ferguson, Missouri, offers low risk moms affordable peri and postnatal care infused with some African traditions. We work in a very holistic fashion. We're thinking about mental and emotional well being physical health, nutritional health, and what family structure looks like. We provide midwifery care and doula care support, and then we provide social support services. So that could be mother-baby donations, mom support groups, childbirth education. And we've been going strong now a little bit over four years, and we've served over 400 families. Hey, Jada. Brittany helped to bring Jada Huffman and Barry Dilworth's son into the world through a natural home birth. I was right there. <laughs> it's very rewarding, especially when you have um, people that you love and care about around you. Brittany's vision and determination is rooted in her own journey into motherhood. My first two children were born via C-section. And by the time I got pregnant the third time around, I hired a midwife. I was a teen mom. I had my first son at 14 years old. It took me years before I could comfortably say that because of the shame and guilt that I held inside of me. It was just a struggle for me to navigate what it was to be a woman. And how I tie that back around to Jama, we do have different communal support systems so that women don't feel voiceless and alone. Just in postpartum. Yeah. No woman is ever turned away, but black women are the priority. According to the CDC, black women are three times as likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women. Brittany wants to disrupt the alarming statistic. We need more diversity and access to uh, black midwives. Within the next three years, our goal is to help another five women graduate and become certified professional midwives. Beyond representation, Brittany says that educating a network of providers outside of her community on inequities in healthcare will also make a difference. Dismantling biases and racism um, is very, very hard. We have been so lucky to meet some amazing women who are true allies. Jama is well known in the community for really saving ourselves. I just so firmly believe in what the village is doing um, in providing unbiased access to midwifery care. As a chiropractor, I wanted to be able to help. It's really important as an ally that, that I remain just that 
and not try to steer the bus. I'm just honored to be a part of the experience. Ferguson is fertile ground for change. We literally spend as much time as we can to uplift families to have a wholesome, successful life. Coming up, an inside look at a new app fueled by positivity. That's after the break. the boost with a look at an app that's quickly going viral among high schoolers and it is right up our alley. It's all about complimenting your friends with a mission to boost self-esteem and spread positivity. NBC Savannah Sellers got a first-hand look at the impact it's having on young people. Someone said that I would be the I would finish the test after three minutes which I really appreciate. Best laugh comes to mind. It says has has a 10 pack. Compliments of Gas, the wildly popular new social media app that has millions of teenagers complimenting each other or gassing each other up. Finn, Nikki, William, and Brandon go to New York City's Stuyvesant High School, where nearly 900 students are on the app. When you open up your phone, how does it make you feel? Great, because I think people are noticing little details about me that I thought they didn't know about. You know like when a random person compliments you on your street and it's like really nice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's really nice. Like I got one that stated that Taylor Swift would write a love song about me, and I just had a smile on my face. Like, this person gets me. <laughs> the four sophomores showed me how it works. First, users anonymously answer a series of polls about their friends. Cutest little sneeze. The polls range from thoughtful superlatives. Has the kindest heart. To flirty confessions. You would ask them out if they weren't taken. When a student is picked, they get a notification or a flame, but no name of the person who voted. It's anonymous, <laughs> so I try to, you know, do a little background digging. A little digging? A little digging? Uh, just a little bit. Just <laughs> a like... little. Part of the reason gas is resonating, it's authentic yeah, to this generation. It speaks their language. I only spit back. No. Translation, you speak the truth. You drip just on that. that. Translation, you have good style. It's like a whole meal. Translation, extremely attractive. Gas is the brainchild of former Facebook manager Nikita Beer. He says he made the app to spread positivity and improve self-esteem of teens. There's a lot of toxic things about today's social networks, and we just wanted a place where you could just open your phone and see something that makes you feel better about yourself. Launched in three states in August, it took just one month for Gas to shoot to the top of the U.S. App Store. It's now nationwide, and Beer says their feedback shows it's making a difference. We get messages every day from teens, hundreds of them, uh, about the impact it's had. It's helped with their depression, their anxiety. Even some have told us that they've reconsidered self-harm. Wow. 
Can you expand on that a little bit? When you're uh, in your formative years as a teen, you're trying to understand uh, how you're being perceived. What gas has done is it provides a venue for you to open up to your friends and say what you love about each other. And that has enabled people to feel they fit in, that, they, that they're liked by their peers. How nice is that? To have an app and a space that just feels fun. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I check it when I wake up. So when I wake up, I'm like, there's like 10 people that said, I love your hair. Nice and best smile. I walk down the halls and I feel a little bit better about myself. In just five months, more than one and a half billion compliments have been delivered through gas. Just since we've been talking, tell me about the notifications you got. Would make an ugly face and still look pretty. Oh. Would ditch studying for finals for a concert, which <laughs> you if would it was a Taylor Swift have. concert. Yeah, you yes. would. Baby, you're my firework. Oh. oh. I want to know who sent that might be the sole reason for global warming. I don't know who this is. Oh, it's supposed to mean like you're hot. Yeah. Not oh, like wait, you're hot. actually. No. Oh, that's what it, what you, so many compliments. I like the glasses. Thanks. <laughs> Gen Zers kindling kindness and sparking positivity. One flame at a time. Next up, move up her grandma. NBC's Maya Eaglin has the story of how a new generation is picking up their needles and hooks and embracing crochet as a hobby. Online, you could say Gen Z is hooked on a craft some might typically associate with older generations, crochet. I was so excited when I figured out how to do it. The hashtag crochet has been viewed nearly 22 billion times on TikTok with the rise of the granny core trend. It's being embraced by celebrities like Harry Styles and Olympians like Tom Daly, who at the Tokyo Games watch meets with needles and yarn in hand. Now it's turned profitable for some young people, like 27-year-old Jada Zabala and 25-year-old Emma Ujifusa, who actually met through the online crochet community. Yeah, we didn't actually talk until we planned to meet each other in person. But you guys clicked. Yeah, yeah. instantly. Yeah. Once serial hobbyists, they're now dedicated entrepreneurs, making a living by selling their own patterns and pieces online, like Emma's famous fire sweater or Jada's popular pillow cozy. In the pandemic, I had gotten laid off so my first thing was, you know, how can I find a hobby that I can kind of monetize? Experts suggest the trend might have been fueled by the COVID-19 lockdown. In the first year of the pandemic, around six in 10 Americans took on a new hobby and nearly half earned money from it. Anxiety went way up, particularly for young people. The ability to socialize, of course, went way down. And that combination made it really ripe for this age group to take up crafts. People can create businesses now online, right, and get visibility that they couldn't before, so people can really make businesses where they would have no exposure. An age-old craft historically used to make items like gloves or doilies, now given new life by Gen Z, using crochet for prom dresses, bucket hats, and statement pieces. What advice would you give someone if they wanted to dabble in this or start their own business? My advice is always just to, like, do it. Click on a video or reach out to someone you know who crochets. Taking that advice to heart, I tried it out, stepping into the grandma era trend and trying to crochet a granny square. Attempting it once. Grab that yarn mm -hmm. and pull it through the hole. Twice. And you remember how many is in the corner? Girl, no. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe three times. Chain two? No, not yet. Not yet. Oh. Before finally. Yeah, and all the way through. It. And that's a knot. Cute. You did your first granny It looks square. so good. Because there's so much functionality and because you can do so much with crochet, I think it's always going to exist and be around in some sort of form. Maya Eaglin, NBC News. Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. We've got one more video that's sure to leave you with a smile. Check it out. Taylor Swift is many things to many people. Singer, songwriter, performer, Travis Kelsey's love interest. But now, one more thing you can add to the list. Baby Whisperer. Take a look. All right, so here's the backstory. Okay, Beth Nicely is a fitness instructor, personal trainer, Broadway performer, and friend of today. Well, throughout her pregnancy, she uh, kept up her busy training and fitness schedule. And you know what song she played all the time? Bad Blood by Taylor Swift, the version featuring Kendrick Lamar. So, by the time her baby girl was born, she had actually been listening to that oh my God. song in utero for, for a while. And now, it's the song that suits her. Maybe it wasn't Swifty. Maybe it was Kendrick Lamar. And that's it for today. We hope you had some fun. We also did. And we're going to see you next time with more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Hey there, welcome to Start Today. We're stepping into a new season and it's the perfect time to turn over a new leaf. Whether you're, you're setting a new fitness goal for the fall or starting a workout routine for the first time, there's a place for everybody in our Start Today community. We've got over a half million members and it's never too late to join. Just scan the QR code to subscribe to our newsletter and connect with other folks on a mission to get healthy. On this episode, our Chanel Jones takes us inside her training for the New York City Marathon. Plus, today contributor Allie Love revealing her secrets for boosting confidence. And later, we have some simple workouts, including one you can do right from your couch. This is Start Today. First, let's kick things off with our fitness leader, Stephanie Monsoor, and two community members. Okay, so I want you to meet Nancy Stover McCarthy of New Jersey. Fun fact, she just told me her late mom, Dorothy, used to work here as an executive assistant here at the Today is Show. Is that not crazy? That is so crazy. Thank you guys for this full circle moment. Well, how beautiful it's is beautiful. that? beautiful. I love that. Okay, and by the way, I should tell people at home, I'm going to brag on you. You consistently surpassed 10 thousand steps every single Give it up for day. Nancy. Come on. Yes. Proud of you. Thank you for joining our little club. So do you have a question for Stephanie? Yes, I do. Okay. So I've walked a 5K before, mm -hmm. but now I want to walk and run a 5K. Good. Yes, I'm proud Woo! of you. Yes. Okay. So right. how do I prepare my body for the running part? Yes, so we're going to step it up here. And part of our training plan includes stretch and strength. So I'm going to have you hold onto this chair here for balance, Nancy. So anyone at home that needs a modification, go ahead. We're going to do some forward leg swings. Now, this is loosening up the hip flexors, which get really, really tight when you're walking or running a lot. So I want to make sure that you're incorporating. Kind of to do this. Yeah, you do. Try I know. And heels. <laughs> Good job, Chanel. Yeah. I want to make sure that you're really loosening things up, but then for stretch, Strength. We're going to hold it here in front, oh, squeeze that on. quad, good. Strengthen the quad for five seconds and then reach it to the back. Strengthen the glutes and the hamstrings. This is going to help with running, that motion. We need to build the quads, we need to build the glutes, the hamstrings so that we can move forward faster and with more power. But we also got to stretch things it's out. It's a good that active good? stretch. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. This is yeah. great. Feel it. Well, let's tell yes. everybody about Joe. Joe Marrow. Marrow? Marrow. Marrow. Yes. Joe Marrow of Long Island, New York. I want to make sure I got this right. You lost 130 pounds yes. in three Woo! years? All naturally. Give it up for Joe, guys. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. And is it true that all by walking, you kept it off by walking? So cardio is, was very important for my weight loss. Um, without walking about nine to 10,000 steps a day, I wouldn't have achieved my weight loss Good goals. For you. Man, I'm so happy yes. for you. Thank you very Dude, much. That's so yes, great. Thank you. You got something for Steph? 
Yes. So last year, I ran my first 5K at my alma mater's homecoming, FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University. Oh, yes, I went to high school in Naples. Oh, I know wow, FGCU. that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> I'm planning on running my second 5K next month. Yes. Do you have any suggestions or tips for me uh, for my next 5K? Yeah, you know, especially in the heat down in Florida, it is hard to, yes. you know, keep up your stamina. But one thing people forget is to stretch those inner okay. thighs. Okay. So what we're going to do is open the feet wider than the shoulders. Nice. And then go ahead and bend to one side, keeping the other leg straight. Do you feel that stretch in the inner thigh of yes. the stationary leg? Yes. Good. Yes. And then we're going to come Good. back through center and over to the other side. And Jacob, props yeah. to you. This is dynamic stretching. We're Thank Stretching in motion here Somebody to warm up. <laughs> and notes. then we're going to hold this stretch here and turn this into a strength move. So again, strengthening the quad, the glute, but still feeling that stretch, coming through center and going to the other side and holding this strength pose for five seconds. And then alternating. That's going to help you be more loose and limber yes. so that you can run maybe faster even, break a personal great. record, and feel better afterwards. Less recovery time when you it. do the stretching. If they That's can great. do it, you can do it at home too. Thank you, Steph. Amen. Yes. Yes. You guys, congrats. Thank you guys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Great job. Coming up, Chanel's giving us an inside look at what it's like to train for the New York City Marathon. Then later, Allie Love sharing tips for bossing up and boosting confidence. We'll be right back. We're back. Over the past couple of months, you may have heard our very own Chanel Jones is going to be running the New York City Marathon. Here's a look at her journey so far and the huge strides she's been making in her training. Running around is a mainstay of my day at work, at home, and even more with my kids. Running as a sport, though, that's new territory. I did not like gym class with the kids. I hated the monkey bars. I hated field day, all of that stuff. But I love a challenge, and this one's a biggie. And I'm saying, OK, you know what, Chanel? You didn't like it because it was hard. So now you need to take your 45-year-old self and do something that is really challenging. The New York City Marathon. All 26 miles, something I never imagined I'd attempt, even in my wildest dreams. So when I first started doing this, I just thought I would go outside and practice sometimes. I never really thought about really what it takes to prepare for a marathon. For help, I enlisted Nike running coach Jess Woods, who's done 18 ultra marathons. Jess has been a godsend, so she'll send me a schedule for the week. What I've learned is, Running isn't always just running. Some days you may just run for 30 minutes. Other days you'll run for a longer amount of time. But the goal is to get to 26 miles. Jess introduced me to the concept of prehab, an assessment to help improve your form and get ahead of any potential injury. There are no tubes, there are no cords. It's all cameras. And using those cameras and syncing them with the treadmill, they're able to analyze your gait, how you're running, where you're putting your weight your posture, and you're graded on your performance. And I got a C the first time. I don't get C's. I had to lean forward a little more. I had to improve my cadence. Just tweaking a few of those things, running a little bit more forward, 
got me from a C to a B. Initially, five miles seemed like crazy town. So now when I'm aiming for 12 on the weekend, five doesn't seem so bad. To get those endorphins flowing, Jess and I always start. Oh. Yeah? Yes. With a warm up. Quick. Pop, pop. This is nice that we're at a track today. Yeah. Because we're usually just trying to find a quiet space on the plaza. Exactly. Today's goal speed work so that my marathon pace stays consistent. This can be faster than your marathon pace now. Okay. We want you to get tired. Okay. Because then you're going to try and find that marathon pace again after on tired legs. Ooh, okay. All right. Doing it. So it feels hard but not impossible. Right. Okay. Yes. And 203 for that lap. Seriously, who am I? Like, who am I right now? Ultimately, it's about a lot more than just running. A lot of us have things that we've always wanted to do, and life gets in the way. So I am hoping that if I do this, that it will maybe trigger something in you to maybe do something as well. Um, because I think together we can do hard things. All right, let's do it. And while I still have two more months and many, many miles ahead of me, I'm grateful for how far I've come. Three, two, woo! Perfect! Get nice there. job! Woo <laughs> Marathon pace after some hard intervals. Progress. Yeah, that's more than a little bit of progress. That oh was goodness. awesome. Nicely done. Yay. Thank woo. you. And like Chanel, finding the right mindset is really important when tackling a big challenge or even in our daily lives. Today, contributor Allie Love has just what we need to feel empowered and confident. I love this conversation because who hasn't been in a moment where you don't feel your most confident self? Absolutely. Right? And we need a few things, a few tools in our toolbox to pull from so we can boost our confidence, whether it's a morning, a night, or a sure. day. Sure. When you say boss up, what do you mean? Oh, boss up, meaning set the standard, establish the tone, right? Okay. So set the standard means like there's no point in following the rules when you can solve real problems for real people by mm -hmm. listening and staying curious. And then establish the tone means any room or Zoom you walk in, you can affect people's energy negatively or positively. Ooh, we all like know that. this. Okay. That's so you, you have to own that. that power. True. We agree. One of the things that comes up first is the way you look. So Riley here, who looks very familiar, Hi, can y'all tell? Riley's rocking a look that I think is confident. Today I wore my afro. Many of us, when we're trying to be our most confident selves, we have one or two looks that boost that inter mm -hmm. internal confidence. She has a slick back pony, a red lip, and a cat eye. So keep it simple, keep it fierce, keep it focused, baby. You look great. <laughs> you look great. You know, wow. Fantastic. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because sometimes when I feel like I need a blue, like I'll wear my three piece as opposed to mm. you know a sport coat because I feel like that kind of brings how you, you feel. Up. Yeah. Yes, okay. of course. All right. Sometimes how you look on the outside will affect how you feel on the inside. Yes. Let's talk about some confidence boosting content, and and we'll get to the music and what you what people listen to in just a moment. But you maintain this book changed your life. I love wow. this book, Radical Candor, Kim Scott. I think the read is a necessity. The reason for it, it really informs you how to handle yourself in your professional setting, personally and professionally, and then how to carry that with you throughout the day. Sometimes mm -hmm. we feel less confident when we're in a meeting or when we're, a, when we're around our coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so it's like how to speak up, yeah. how to stay focused in those moments and truly be yourself. And I think this book really, you know, gives you the tools for that. So I love it. I've read it a couple times. What about what we're listening to? Uh, a boss playlist. I mean, why not? <laughs> we're going to boss up. It's this called is, a boss playlist. It is called, called a boss, called the boss yes, playlist. Is this called, yours? Yes, I made this playlist oh, this specific, specifically for all of you. Yeah, it's um, on the screen. Yes, this is all our women empowerment music. You like can do it for, for your walking in the morning, Al. Hot mm -hmm. girl walk, Craig. I know you love a hot girl walk. I do. I do. <laughs> Craig does <laughs> a hot On the girl tread, walk. on the Peloton tread. But ah. this this is music that really reminds you of who you are, That's a great and playlist. I love it. Yeah. So Got some Janet Jackson on here too. Boss playlist on Spotify. Yes, on Spotify. Oh, yeah. Lauren Hill. Yeah. I this is it. a great I playlist. You know, okay. I remember in the '70s there would be these posters on walls like a cat on a on a limb hang in there. Uh, but you you've got a more modern version of this. I do. I think what you feed yourself internally is so important. We talk about this all the time. And so these are some of my favorite quotes. If not now, like if not you win. If not now. Win. And I think it's like, it's a reminder that you are important and, mm -hmm. and that you are here and you can do this. Um, another thing that I always say, work the quirk. This is a little quirky, so don't judge me, folks. Okay. It's called, what you call it? Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Work the quirk. Okay. Anytime you need a confidence booster, look at photos of yourself, photos of you and your friends. It reminds you of who you are in the public eye. Like, mm. how do you, how does the world see you? Mm. And so it sounds weird to look at yourself, but go through your no. photos oh, and look at your I've got a ton of our, yes. of our yeah. pictures. 
And so, you do too. Yes. I've, in fact, I have a. If you go in my dressing room right now. Yes. Al Roker's picture is about There you go. Door. I mean, who, who doesn't want to be That reminds you of what you don't want to be. <laughs> oh no. And you know what? I will say this this little, what you, um, you know, the quotes Same. and stuff like that. I grew up with them all over the house. My yeah. mom would put them in the bathroom, so yeah. I feel like it was good for her, but it was good for me as a yes. teenager, too, to see these things when You're I left the house. You're feeding yourself. You're absorbing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my last thing, which is really, really important, uh -huh. is when you need a confidence booster, okay. text your friends and have them remind you of who you are. Oh. So I've texted my friends, Emma Lovewell or Sierra, and just say, like, I need a, I need a moment. Can you just help me? Like, I'm like, hey, hype moment. Come through for me, sis. Oh. And she does. And these are just like, they'll send me a text message. That's a great idea. A hype moment. And, and I have a, a little uh, surprise for oh. all three of you. Okay. okay. All right. So, Al, you're up first. Now, okay. you're good at reading the teleprompter. I saw you on your live this morning. Um, so, let's go ahead and read. Can you see that? We're going to oh, roll wow. this teleprompter. Oh. Al, who is this from, Al? That's from Jim Gaffigan. It's, a, it's Age of Anger, Ego, and Artificial Intelligence. You're an unsung hero. Everyone has struggles and heartbreak, but you seem to embrace every moment. Oh, so nice. Authentic kindness. The world needs more Al Rokers. Please don't end up being a serial killer <laughs> because that would make me look stupid. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Jim. <laughs> but thank you. That's awfully so nice. He's such not, a lovely not just Al Craig. Take a look. Well, my, whose text am I reading? Oh, this is oh, my younger yes. brother. That's beautiful. Read it. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. hey, man. God broke the mold when he made you. Your understanding and compassion for others is something most don't know. Wow. Uh, I love to watch you when you work because your love and passion for your craft is absolutely remarkable. If we were in person, we would raise a glass of bourbon, but... Here's to you, my friend. Continue to knock it out of the park, bro. Oh, wow. Cool. Does that that's make you feel good? good? Almost made me cry. Yes, wow. yes. Okay, here you go. Oh. Jeez. That is so sweet, Alan. And Chanel, of course, for you. Oh, oh Dylan. Dylan. Oh, that's so sweet. Dear Chanel, your laugh brings me so much joy, and your zest for life is infectious. Thank you for knowing me so well. Oh. Our friendship is truly special. Oh, yes. That's texting. a great idea. Yes, Thank you, texting Alan. your friends and family to remind you of who you are is the biggest confident booster. So I hope some of these tips, again, in your toolkit, you can pull from yeah. at various moments in your life. And you can be there for others. Thank that's you. just That was great. What a great idea. Thank you, Allie. Up next, we're going to show you some low-intensity exercises to help your body recover after a workout. Plus, some simple moves you can do while lying down. Just lay down, because we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. Like most things, exercise is all about balance. Sometimes it can be tempting to skip rest days, especially when you're making progress and you want that momentum to keep going. Well, Nike master trainer Joe Holder recently walked us through some low-intensity workouts to help make the most out of your rest days. 
So okay. We're going to talk about active recovery. Okay. Uh, I'm training for a marathon right now. It's amazing. Just Walks like Chanel. I know. Yeah. There's a trick here. In active recovery, we often use lower intensity workouts to help us feel better. Yeah. But you can also use this in daily life. Okay. okay. Low intensity workouts, three times a week, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Both increase energy and reduce fatigue, people say. Oh, okay. So we're okay. going to start okay. with jump rope. Okay. And this is what we're going to do, show you some different ones. Let's jump rope. All Come right. On. When's the last time we let's jumped rope? jump rope, Chanel? Yeah, let's go. Um, like when I was in fifth grade. So this is an easy oh, one to you. <laughs> nice and simple. Look so I'll you. do it instead. So you would jump rope. Uh -huh. and you would put it down. And how then long you give me a body weight exercise. So you got a one minute jump rope. So play like I did that. One minute body weight. Yep. And it's nice and easy. You do that for 10 rounds, low intensity. You should you do be that. doing that so very I rapidly. I should be able to talk for it. Yes. Yeah, but I could talk. My heart rate is good. Well, yeah, that's good to hear you. Another <laughs> one we got is foam roll. Del, okay. you come with me. All right. So we're going to sit here. Easy way. Okay. So again, remember, a lot of people to sit here, complain of sore muscles or fatigue. Right. That's why they don't improve their health. Okay. But this is a super simple one to be able to do that. Siri's interested in Siri's what you're saying. Siri's interested. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so we roll there. Okay. Nice and quick. Maybe get the hamstring. Good. You make it look so easy. Your, you, your limbs are so much longer than mine. Let you stand up. Okay. This is what we got. So after you do that, then yes. you just give me a nice dynamic exercise. So hug the knee to the okay. chest. Okay. So we go one muscle group on the foam roll one minute. So this Joe, is, is there a way to, to modify that if you've got like knee problems? Yeah, this one, knee, uh -huh. yeah, and nice and easy. All you have to do, maybe just move across the body. Uh -huh. We're just working ranges of motion. So well, I'll, I got something for you. Good. It feels good? Yeah. One team, like one dream. <laughs> I got one something team, for you. One All right. dream. Okay. We call this weighted aerobics. Okay. So nice and easy. You could just find some weight. Uh -huh. You could maybe give me a curl, All right? right let's you go. give me a lateral raise. Oh, Come okay. On. Give me that Long curl. Long limbs. There we go. That's okay. Lateral He's got raise. a wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> maybe the push press. Okay. Good. Oh. And then okay. we just cycle through exercises. Yep. Uh -huh. For about 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Take 15 seconds off. Repeat that. 10 or so rounds. And and yeah. even if you can't do heavier, heavier weights, like canned, canned goods, yep. things like that? Exactly, because remember what we said, low intensity. Low, low intensity. And guess what improved energy better, uh, low intensity than actually medium? Really? So, yes. All right. Active okay. recovery. So if you do that real quick, then boom, boom, boom. Minutes, that's all you go. need. So that's my, my takeaway, right. one team, one dream. One team, one dream. <laughs> right. Just ahead, we've got two more workouts for you, including exercises, I love this, you can do from your couch. We'll be right back. We're back with more Start Today workouts. First up, Peloton instructor Tunde Oyunane stopping by the third hour to share some simple ways to tone arms and core. First of all, congratulations. Thank you so much. And tell me what it means. First of all, that's next level. That's um, but for all of you guys to be highlighted in a group of women who are changing how we think about fitness, it's not just leg warmers and doing grapevines. You know, nothing yeah. wrong with that, but you guys are so forward thinking. Well, it's incredible to be here. Last time I was here, I was celebrating the launch of my book, Speak, and now to be one of six incredible women featured as the forces of fitness for amazing. women's health. It feels pretty surreal. I was picked on and teased for the way that I looked as a kid and 
This shoot was for younger Tunde to be celebrated in my body for my flaws and all. It all and all, it is for every single person who has never felt comfortable in their own skin. Ah, I love really that. incredible. Love well it. Said. I know. All right, so you're gonna show us uh, by jumping right into this workout. We've got some yeah. fans, NBC staffers. Uh, so let's just get to it. All right, so this is a quick 10-minute workout that you can do at your home for arms and core. All you need is music and some dumbbells. We're gonna start right, okay. with grab your weight. We're gonna start with our arms and then we'll finish this workout on the floor. We're gonna go from into some bicep curls to hammer curls. So in a bicep curl, your palms are facing up towards your shoulder and then you're gonna come back up and flip your grip so that your palms rotate and face inward on the way in. So this is a really great way to maximize on time, targeting both heads of your biceps. You're doing great. Oh, thank you. And in a I've, suit, I'm, I'm wildly impressed. Way. Yeah. Does it matter how heavy they are? So I would recommend anything from about five to 20 pounds. We're working with a little lighter dumbbells today. I don't wanna break too much of a sweat in our, our beautiful attire, but I, <laughs> I'd recommend about 10 to 12 okay. um, of the bicep to hammer curl. From there, we're gonna go into an overhead extension. This is gonna target oh, that's the gonna... back. This, yeah, now you feel it. Ooh. This is gonna target the back of your arms. So make sure to keep your elbows rotated in, almost framing your hairline, wonderful. And Tunde, how far do you go back when you do this? I'll try this at home sometimes and try to figure out like what's the right point? You're killing, I would say you wanna keep your hips tucked. You you so once you start to notice that your hips are flaring, maybe you're going back a little bit too far. I should start working out of my dress I know, room. I this feel is a good strategy. Right? You start to feel yeah. it quickly, right? Yeah. Even the light dumbbells will attack you too. Yeah. So same thing here about 10 to 12. Uh, before you move on to our final arm movement, which is an L raise. So this is gonna target your shoulders, specifically the front and sides of your shoulders at the same exact time. Mm. Core so stay strong, I hips know. stay tucked. To, like, you nice, know what? Right? It's staggering. one of those things where we have no excuse because you can do this at home. You can you know do it I mean? at home, you yeah. can do it at the airport, you yeah. can do it while you're waiting for your laundry to, to dry. I say, Create a playlist, three to four songs, and again, you can bang this out really quickly in a matter of 10 minutes. So we're gonna put our dumbbells down. So those, those first three movements, 10 to 12 reps three times through. Okay. We're gonna finish out with some core. Now, uh, advanced version, you can hold on to a dumbbell. Feet are planted on the ground. We're going into a Russian twist. We're gonna twist from right to left. So from side to side. Now, Ooh. if you're like my guy Peter, who is on his Peloton just about every single day, That's a, this is easy well. for him. And so Peter and I were gonna pick our heels up off the ground. Was this a progression to this see movement. If I could do this. Very nice. Ooh, yes. Working from side to side. You know who's appreciating you saying that? My wife, who knows that is not. <laughs> who knows that is not true. You gotta wear the the badge, right? The Peloton badge. Girl, how there. long are we supposed to so do this? So we're here for 30 seconds. We're gonna fast forward. Seconds. Seconds. This is like a yeah. This is a fake 30 Five. seconds. You're gonna set your dumbbells down. We're gonna go to, into our last and final movement, a hollow hold. So back is completely flat on the mat. It's so flat that even an ant couldn't crawl mm. underneath you. So we're gonna pick our left foot up. Nice. You can tuck your hands underneath your booty. Mm -hmm. Right heels come off the mat. Head, neck, and shoulders lift off the mat. The higher your feet, the easier this will be. Oh. The lower your heel to the ground, the more challenging this will be. And we're gonna hold this. We're gonna light our Woo! campfire. We're gonna okay. hold this for 30 How seconds. How you doing, Sarkay? Walk up, thank you. you. So we have a, we have a like commercial. <laughs> I want one of those milkshakes. No one was. Ah. Why was I offered the milkshake? The milkshake sit for three, good. for two, and one. Sit it up, everybody. Great job. I think I'm stuck. How do you feel? I actually feel really good. That's just right. Good. I feel like I we did that. something. I Hopefully know. you did it with us as well. Thank I you so it, much. I hope you got another milkshake. Our workout Ooh. partners. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. And if you're feeling a little extra lazy, we've got a workout you can do from the comfort of your couch. Here to show us how it's done, trainer Vicky Justice. The point of this workout is that it can be done by anyone, anywhere, anytime. All it's right. a few minutes long and it makes you feel just so good in okay. just a few minutes. What's I love the first it. workout? So, the first exercise. I'm we like, are gonna... I want to do whatever you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, She's not like working out on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vicky, you were saying, what, what's, what's the first one? We got to lay on our side. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, for the first exercise. <laughs> I'm following her around everywhere. Like, what well, she does. you let her go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> laughing is also good for your abs. So that's true. <laughs> okay. So, for the first laughing. exercise, Al, you want to be careful with your head. Okay. We are going to do side leg raises. Okay. So, staying with your core tight, you're going to raise your leg up just a bit, not too high, okay. come back down. 
So this works your glute medius, which is the upper outer part of your booty, and your Good TFL. Well, this is so medius. This is, and really and truly, if we're watching something on TV, mm -hmm. you yes. can almost just do this while Absolutely. it passes the time. Okay. Exactly. How many times should we do this? Like 12 to 20 reps. It just depends on your own fitness level, uh -huh. but you don't have to go too high. <laughs> okay. What's another lower body one? Uh, another lower body one is a clamshell. So you want to put your legs together like okay. this. Mm -hmm keeping your heels together, you're gonna open your knee up like this, back down. You should feel this one in your glute maximus. Some producers are gonna lose their job over this thing. This is abs. Okay. Well, well this one some is producer great. didn't make you wear one size too small. <laughs> to the upper body. How about we move okay. on to the upper body? <laughs> okay, upper body, we're gonna be seated so we can, okay. you know, you guys can come up on the couch. Oh, okay. everybody up. <laughs> such a we jack. can be more mature about this. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Vicky. Vicky. Sorry, Vicky. Okay. So, we are gonna start off with robot arms. So, you're gonna put your arms up like this. Make sure your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Okay. And all you're gonna do is bring move. your arms like this and up. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> Kind of like you. those cats you see in the Chinese restaurant. Oh, yes. <laughs> it has a new name. <laughs> exactly. But this is great for your shoulders, for your mobility, Vicky, for your I'm upper sorry. body. And honestly, I feel it. And how, how many times do you do this one? Same thing, like 15 to 20 times. Okay. And this is great because you can do this at your desk when yeah. you're at work. Just, I mean, your coworkers might be like. And how okay. about a good, a good core exercise? Core exercise. We're going to do some lean back marches. You oh, want to lean back lean just back. a little bit okay. until you feel your abs engage okay you're gonna bring one knee up and switch this is good and again yeah. if you're watching let's say a 30 minute show you can get all of these exactly in. and these yeah. are so and easy that you don't really have to abs. think about them that much yeah honestly if you're show. watching tv a couple times a week or whatever you're doing and you could do this and get this in Vicky, it's not bad you. and i want to apologize formally for my friend out. <laughs> And that's all for this episode of Start Today. Don't forget, scan the QR code to sign up for our newsletter. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time on Today All Day. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Again, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my God, I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all around superstar, Drew Barrymore and her chef BFF, Pilar Valdez, are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Oh, this is good. Wow, this Boom. Was... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's not Don't a competition. Mad. Look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> Look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so juvenile? <laughs> When are we going to turn 14? I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to lob off the top of it. We're going to just take off the dark green. Mine doesn't look anything like yours so does, So what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't, um, you took off, you were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. Um, but our first step was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. 
and now, you're picking it off. Now, are we keeping this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon, and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. I feel good about this part. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your rind, rind basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're going to flip it over so it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to yeah. tuck in those I like digits. to cut like this. I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I like to lop off. And this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's pretty What's the difference chunky. between dicing and mincing? Size. So the, absolutely. Size, <laughs> size matters. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pimm's. It's based on a Pimm's cup, which is usually with gin. But this oh, one is without. Way, you would never know there was an alcohol in <laughs> here. Oh, my gosh. Drew what loves, is that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer. And Drew, I know you love tea. So it's a combination of black and rooibos. OK. That's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. so good. All right, so wait, what do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, Savannah, so three you're gonna add that. Water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got mm -hmm. it. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the honey equal bear. parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain no. yes. ratio to remember. Yeah. yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or are you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. Is yeah. like then you have to work harder to get the solubility. If you shake it in, I feel like it's just a better. That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is half on top. Half teaspoon. Half seed, teaspoon of fennel please, seed. Honey, lovely. Sprinkle on in. <laughs> uh, you got crazy. It's how half usually teaspoon do. coriander. There seed. you go. I'm and cooking. we're gonna do half a teaspoon of the cumin, oh. and then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the pink peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh. Savannah, have you had pink peppercorn? No, I before? have not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're not super, a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. box. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of she water. Me too well. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have tried. Right. So you're just to pouring it. it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is gonna be good to go. It's like so freshness. easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. <laughs>to the pistachio duca component of our salad. Okay. Duca is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander. seed. Mm -hmm. Two, teaspoons Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is this is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Absolutely. Going off. Oh. Going wrong.
okay, oh, then it's she's one, rogue. So one quarter so cup sesame seeds. Hold, hold on the sesame oh. seeds. Actually, Savannah, so you're going to toast that Can we first. turn it up? How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay. Okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it. And you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um, and you're going to notice color you're going to start to get a little darker but really what you're looking for savannah is the smell okay it's going to start to like release this like toasty smell you're going to smell the coriander it's going to be very floral it's starting. can you smell yeah. it yeah. let's give that a shake actually oh actually yeah yeah i can Ooh, i like it and yes. on the average would you say about two minutes color? about two minutes okay. yeah take it off because okay. i can see a okay. little bit of heat let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the pan oh, okay yeah. now what um and you're going to divide actually the spices between your and drew's more Okay. Have -Z, have -Z. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash immediately, I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down. Because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, it's yeah. gonna like firework spices okay, so everywhere. So I'm like just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine? Green? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the duca, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture, so you'll have. Fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. I'm happy <laughs> with where mine is at. How do you like mine? What do you think? Beautiful, oh, lovely. Okay. That's good. good. Yeah, That's and nice. I think you you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a I, texture. Yeah, yes. play on I texture. I went hard. You went soft. Oh. Well, so now we're gonna toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little. You can use the spatula. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. While Savannah is uh, toasting the sesame seeds, Drew, I'm going to have you add in um, our salt. Our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. It's a One. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on top of my chocolate chip cookies. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. I did not. <laughs> I a little baking skill. And then, Drew, you're going to do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds. Two tablespoons. And hemp seeds. And Savannah. Yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, a pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, a smidge, smidge, smidge of black pepper. Okay. Smidge. That's more that, that's than a plenty. Smidge. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot. <laughs> I love <laughs> spicy <laughs> tongue. Everything <laughs> could be coated and rubbed in pepper. All right, do you think we're I'm good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. But <laughs> <laughs> like, um, we need oh, music. Oh, oh, oh. All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Dump them yeah, in. Dump it in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like stuff. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually going to stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. So I think we're, we've established this a This is a really good combo. <laughs> we're going to scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're gonna give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind. There. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. Okay, that looks amazing. Yeah, and I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. So just take a little. Take a little, and and then we can sort of play from there. So mm. it's gonna be, it's gonna have that floral from. Yes. I like it. I wouldn't yes. change one thing, would you? It has Perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. 
<laughs> All right, success, ladies. The love story continues. <laughs> we made dukkha. We're gonna assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's gonna be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. For them. <laughs> Let's go. You guys got this. <laughs> All right, okay. so in your little jar um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little, so just give them a little shake. Mm -hmm. It emulsifies it, which is there you ever go, so Drew. important. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first, it'll taste 50 times better. Okay. Drop in your knowledge. All right, so in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula. So I like to coat a little bit of the bowl. I know, it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But You're I'm not able gonna use to, all of that. No, no, you don't have to, and you dress the taste, but when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building. Okay. So, a little arugula on the plate. Remember, oh. you're making something beautiful. Okay. okay. Arugula on the plate. This is where the competition comes. Yes. Okay, so and what's then our next one? Your watermelon slices, you're gonna dip it in the dukkha. Oh, dip it in the duke. And however you want to dip it is up to you, and you're going to lay it yeah, on you, the plate. You do a you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices. And oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duca, just so that it has that freshness, and then you'll get the pop. Oh, so the some duca and some don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually asking. I feel like this should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. <laughs> just cheesy, like Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> By the way, the best. OK. Here, there's no rules. OK. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. I win. What if I make like a tower? I know. You can totally way, make I'm a tower. Thinking of a tower. <laughs> little like time. Jenga, okay. and then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also, okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. Like I learned from a little Salt Bay Maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we? Oh, uh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera. <laughs> yes, that's what, I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> this looks very pretty. Really? It, it really does. I like I, your little tower. I feel like they're both they're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three very extremely different, different approaches. Yeah. <laughs> you went like just put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a um, a, a, a Lines, strategic right? pattern. Yeah, no, it does. And yours is sort of abundant, <laughs> and mine is a mound. I love it. <laughs> All, right. All right, shall Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let, oh, Cheers, let's it, guys. Yeah. We're doing one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's going to devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. 
All right, we've got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Did, did we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I'm, salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So, Drew, what I'm going to have you do actually is season the shrimp. So, that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so, we're going to do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're going to sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Season it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg wash. I'm there shimmying you my salt. No not dumping, dumping over here. <laughs> no, not anymore, I'll never dump I'll again. Love. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of brownness. And you're gonna spin it, we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but well, the, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball, I so I'm gonna try. Eyeball. I think this is one tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sorta. That's really, really great. And then you're just gonna rock Our it. Our baby's all grossed <laughs> up. <laughs> She's eyeballing. Oh, no. I eyeballed. Okay. Okay. And what you're gonna do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat no. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You, you know, know she again. does. Miss spicy she, she likes. It's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in... you can start pulling. Okay, um, you do this. So we were just ooh, um, infusing the olive oil mm, basically with good. that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? Throw this in. You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just all dented okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single layer. Okay. And you're not gonna stir it, you're gonna shake it, you know, lay occasionally, it lay it down, yeah. Actually, will you hold, Savannah? You don't think it's hot enough? Yeah, so. Stand back. How are you, what are you looking at there. to know if it's so hot enough? So you want a, a little bit of ripple, you do not want smoke. We're not okay. like, trying no. to. And no bubble. <laughs> Wait, let me. Just... You want that sizzle and you're not getting it. Oh yeah, it. I'm definitely wanting, I can see it a little bit here. Let me, can I borrow that? There you go, here you go, there oh. you go, there you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, interesting. I stepped away. Everything started <laughs> functioning. Meanwhile, my arm is going to fall off. Um, holding these. Oh, yeah. Shrimp. That, you know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a definite I get it. That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear that. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about, talk about cooking, you know, like smell and what you can see. I'm mm. always like, I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in the again. strongest sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. Its and tails are already pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not yet. You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That was so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You like, don't mess with we're them. We're not yeah. them. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go in different, different spots. Moving in different go. neighborhood. Yeah. Because it does, you know, some stuff a will have zip code I know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two, beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. Right. You touch it with your finger right now. You see Pretty how firm. firm it is? Yes. Okay. Is that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out, leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, they're basically like 
That's almost it. Almost done. Mm -hmm. We're gonna finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually? Speaking of pasta, stir. I've forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try and no, very far. Nowhere All near. Right. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like. Can I pencils? Sure. Uh, that's great to so, No, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have a uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> the yummy yes, bits. The, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. Um, I love that. All right, you're gonna do, um, not the all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yes. That's impressive. Four. All right, and that goes into the pan. Look at yeah. This is hey, right here. Duty. This is graduate school. <laughs> We're gonna dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're gonna let this go. I want you guys to taste it. Where it is, there's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. But you so have there's one. no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine, right? Oh. And that's gonna reduce in color. Oh my! What do you think? It's incredible! <laughs> I'm actually just gonna come in. Mm -hmm. What's and this lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not gonna do all of it because I want to do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Okay. I think. What do you think over there? Uh, that, that. No, not done. Still not done. Well, actually, I'd like Pilar to test this. Because happy to noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this maybe might it's actually be pretty almost good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah, yeah, almost there. Should I turn it down so, more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. Really going crazy yeah. here. And how's that here sounding now, Pilar? <laughs> yeah. Now we got That's it. That's the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What'd like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yes. I forget everybody. And then tuck them so under it. Oh. oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> <laughs> I like your today show theme. Pasta water. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. So yes. I know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like you okay. can go slow and you're going to do a rough chop. Because it's ready. Drew reports that the pasta is All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're going to start putting that pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's totally Ooh. fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just going to make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Look how beautiful that sauce is. Oh my gosh, this is, looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little, saved it, a Drew? A little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're gonna kill the heat. Okay. Done. And then you're gonna garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't want to go crazy, right? Just a little like that. Just a just a little for color, and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's with the, the shrimp oh gosh, is this looks so good. Perfect. <laughs> like wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for you. Okay. Yeah, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, because this thing weighs six billion pounds. Ow, watch out, watch out. Okay, look, I think we did pretty good. Cool. Oh, yes. I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow. And then you By the way, I feel like you should Lion King that now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! Yes. <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili okay. flake, lemon. Garnish. Love it, garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those, let's go. Yeah. Guys, Shall we? let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it.
Yeah. Oh. How so beautiful does this look? I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really, shall we? Yes. Okay. Please. My first Dooku. I've never had a Dooku before. Dooka. The Dooka. <laughs> Some chocolate. They're so good. Mmm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. In the back of the palate and through the nose. But mm. it's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little it. floral. Listen, I love that pickle, Ryan. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon, Ryan. I'm really excited that you're saying that. Me too. That to this know, is though. a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little shrimp so in there, for you. I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the... God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that... Um, like a fork I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. should work much nicer. Do you nest there me? you go. I wanna nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kinda dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, And fancy then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third All right, time. I need a third, charm. Third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. Let's see. I, oh no, you're okay. nesting. Oh, there That's you your go. best nest yet. There you See? go. Third time's the charm. Oh, and that then, is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, there you go. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp like perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture. So it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. Can we raise a glass? To friendship. To friendship. To friendship. Cheers. Hi there, welcome to The Boost. Today is National Food Day, and of course, we all know that food's a great way to bring people together. So today, we are hosting a feast for the eyes. Kicking things off, our very first tailgate. We brought you some good food and good company to MetLife Stadium to surprise some very deserving kids. Check it out. On any given Sunday, there are more than 82,000 New York Giants fans getting ready for the big game at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And this Sunday, we were four of them. Go! Giant Stadium tailgate! Yeah! Come on, go low! Right. Oh. And right away, we proved yeah. that we should go not go quit go. our day jobs. My broker! Oh! Right here, SG! Okay, go long, go long. Go real long! Ah. Okay, okay, guys, let's go. Yeah. Where's the food? We need the drink. Right. Yes. The food. Yes. Yeah, and football. Football. Let's do it. Yeah, like we're here. Yes. <laughs> I just thought. Yeah, here. Food and drink. Let's go. Oh, this. Let's go. Woohoo! Woo! You look so cute. But it wasn't all fun and games, at least not yet, anyway. All right, let's go. You got those the chicken. Here we go, hot dogs. We had a Good. tailgate to set one. up for okay. some very special mm. guests. Ketchup, relish, all the fixings. You guys are going to sit there while we work? Well, we did it. Okay. Looks like we're ready. Yeah, let's cool. go. I think we got things to do. And ready? people to see. Really some, important people. Some special guests? All right, let's so, go. Let's Shall do it. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. So we reached out to the Tackle Kids Cancer Initiative to invite a few courageous kids currently in treatment at Hackensack Meridian Health Children's Hospital in New Jersey to join us. And lucky for us, we had five special guests to give a giant welcome to. We wanted to make sure that Dominic, Shane, Jaden, Riley, and Jabari knew this wasn't just any ordinary tailgate party. Do y'all know that this guy right here 
is the guy who makes the food for the Giants before every game. And he made them for us. And this wasn't just any tailgate spread. It was prepared by the Giants' own executive chef, Angelo Basalone. He fuels the players, and now he was fueling us. Can I have chicken finger than a cupcake? Thank you. Absolutely. It's going in. I can feel it. We said this wouldn't be an ordinary tailgate, and we were about to deliver on that promise with one more very special guest, legendary Giants quarterback and two-time Super Bowl champ, Eli Manning. For the last eight years, Eli has been a huge advocate for Tackle Kids Cancer. Tackle Kids Cancer, how did that become your cause? For me, just visiting, uh, visiting the hospital um, you know, years ago and just wanted to do more. You know, At first, it was just making, trying to get a, a few smiles on these kids' faces that are going through a tough time and then said, how can we raise more money? How can we you know, do a better job getting these kids back home? You're yeah. an amazing football player. You're a legend. But the bravery of kids, yeah. the bravery yeah. that they have to face something so young mm -hmm. and take it on. It's, it's unbelievable. And they have the best attitude, and that's why they're going to beat this. Well, you're doing amazing stuff. So here we are, a tailgate at a Giants game. How does it feel to be on this side of the game? I like it. You do? <laughs> really? Very good. No one's going to hit me today, hopefully. <laughs> Eli, we've counted the number of people, fans who are here, who have Eli Manning tattoos. Oh my goodness. Full face, <laughs> yeah. your signature. Well, I appreciate that. The support I've had yeah. uh, while I was playing, uh, yeah. post playing, yeah. has been unbelievable here in New York and loved every moment. Right. And the kids were loving every moment with Eli, and we were all about to love him even more. I got a little special surprise for the five of you. Here in a minute, we are going into the stadium on the field and get a little uh, on field uh, <laughs> breakdown, get to see the players run out a little bit. And uh, how's that sound? That sound good? Yeah. Follow Eli. Walking onto the field was a magical moment for both the kids and the kids at heart. Eli took us all the way to the 50 yard line where he recruited a new line of wide receivers. Which guy run? Just run two steps and go that way. I'll throw it to you, right? And I'll say, hut. Get your pass. Come on, Jabari. Oh. Yes! Let's oh. dance. Let's oh dance. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! But their feet weren't about to touch down anytime soon. Eli had one more surprise. The Giants have y'all a suite at the game. So we're staying for the game and all gonna be in a suite together and get to watch uh, watch the game tonight. Food, drinks, there's a dessert cart that comes around in like the second quarter. Really good, yeah. yeah. Soon the stadium will be filled with tens of thousands of fans roaring for their heroes. But in this moment, it was clear who had the biggest hearts on the field. Tackle Kids Cancer on three. One, two, three. Tackle, Tackle Kids Cancer! Cancer! Yeah! Next, let's visit a bakery that creates recipes for success. You might even say they're baking a difference in the lives of young chefs in the making. NBC's Kate Snow explains. It's a busy day for the crew at Rising Above Bakery in Nyack, New York. How many cookies do you want? 21-year-old Connor Carson likes being part of a team. What do you bake now? I'm baking um, breads, cookies, scones. Got it. All right, tell me when it's ready. Founder Shiri Raveni Ulrich was an avid baker and speech therapist who noticed years ago when she baked cookies with her students with special needs, they lit up. They found their voice in the kitchen. It was just beautiful. So during COVID, she started a bakery in her own house. This oven was in your dining room. Yes. For a long time. Yes. This January, they finally moved to a temporary storefront, employing young adults with developmental disabilities supported by volunteers. What's the idea? To give them a meaning, to wake up in the morning and say, I want to go to work. I want to be 
as important as anyone else. I'm going to take the glaze that's already done here. Luke Garrison showed me how to make a maple glaze. I do make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. But I've learned, I grow and learn from them. It's just so much harder. Lisa Carson is Connor's mom and serves on the bakery's board. The minute he walked in the door, what he brought to the table was valued. They really saw him for who he was. Rising Above Bakery won't have this space much longer. The nonprofit is raising money, hoping to secure a permanent storefront. What do you like about working here, Connor? Being seen, I think it's the most important thing. Being um, seen? Being seen. So that means, like, I think, um, like, having customers come in and see how we can work together. Do you think this place has kind of changed your life? I think it did, yes. Um, it really opened my eyes to see who, who I am. And that is the sweetest recipe of all. Kate Snow, NBC News, Nyack, New York. boost on this National Food Day. This next couple truly knows the power of a good meal. They went over the college students in their town with what else? Free food. Take a look. Food has always played a special part in Tom and Rachel Sullivan's love story. This is purple chicken noodle soup. <laughs> but Tom's passion for creating healthy and delicious meals began two years ago when they started trying for a baby. So I was diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. And at that time, kind of the only recommendation I was given was to go on birth control. And we found some evidence out there that it might be able to manage it through food and nutrition. And this is scary, but let's, let's try it with food. Tom started collecting all types of recipes and kept a secret record of them online. It was just a place that I could literally have a picture, a description. Like, I didn't want anyone to know about it. When I got word of it, I made a TikTok about it. That video going viral overnight, bringing tens of thousands of new followers to their social media accounts. And it's also when the couple started posting about Kevin Gallagher, a college student and family friend. Hi. This is for Kevin, our college this is for kid. Kevin. <laughs> Back then, dorms were shut down due to COVID, so Kevin and his roommates were staying off campus, coincidentally near Tom and Rachel. I saw him at the gym, and then he told me that the uh, cafeterias had also shut down at this point. Tom, being who Tom is, was like, oh man, come over. I can make you a meal, like swing by anytime. And that's what Kevin did. It allows you to have a little piece of home with you. And I would take little snippets of videos and send it to his mom. And then um, I put a compilation together through that on TikTok. And that's when like our entire profile was just comments from people being like, I want to be adopted. How do I get free food? <laughs> we got like college <laughs> students like, hey, where are you guys at? <laughs> so I think we literally just put on like our Instagram story. story yeah. I have food this weekend. I happened to look at the story that day and I was like, all right, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Student Krista Bain, who has been following Tom and Rachel's story since the beginning, became one of their adoptees. They're just so nice and friendly and welcoming, so it was easy to 
feel at home. Soon, Tom and Rachel are feeding hundreds of students a week, totally free of charge, no questions asked, setting up a GoFundMe and relying on donations for supplies. Nice coffee bar. Food. The couple quickly building a community of students who would drop by once a week for a meal and a chat. Being able to take a break on Sundays and not have to worry about a meal, it was a relief. I knew like they would always be happy to see me. Krista sent us a uh, text message and it was this, this very heartfelt letter saying how much she appreciated it. And me and Tom like looked at each other after that. We're like, yeah, we have to keep doing this. <laughs> And just eight months after starting this journey, Tom and Rachel got the news they'd been waiting so long to hear. <laughs> she put in the baby nursery? Rachel giving birth to their baby girl Sutton just last month. She was just a little angel. She's perfect. Tom and Rachel plan to continue the meals in the fall. And Kevin, now a rising junior, will definitely be back. And Tom has honestly been a great role model to me because I've never seen someone give back so much. We're overfilled with like gratitude. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know if they're cousins or aunts or uncles, but. <laughs> He's got a lot of family members. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's a little food for thought. Did you know New Jersey is known as the diner capital of the United States? It has an estimated 400 plus across the state. Al Roker recently caught up with one. Everybody would be fortunate if they could have an epic quest that they were on. What is your epic quest? Well, our quest is to eat at every diner in the state of New Jersey, and it's turning out to be a, a bigger quest than we probably originally anticipated. New Jersey residents John and Carrie Ricklin have an appetite for a greasy spoon. So why why diners, Carrie? Gotta eat. Yeah, true. <laughs> Since 2015, John and Carrie have paid a visit to some of the Garden State's finest diners. This meal at the Mark Twain Diner in Union marks their 212th. So are you both from New Jersey? No, actually I'm the Jersey girl. I am the Westchesterite. Oh. And moved to New Jersey uh, when we got married. The Ricklands have been married 39 years. I'm a nurse, I went to nursing school and Coincidentally or not, his sister was my roommate. Oh. The nursing club, whatever, was having a semi-formal, so his sister said, John, would you be my roommate's date? So he did her a favor, and we've been together since. The couple building their life together, raising two daughters before this food journey began. It was about eight years ago while we were in Livingston, New Jersey, and there was a diner around the corner that was holding the menu, and she just snapped a picture of me, and really half-jokingly, I said, it would be really cool if we could take this exact same picture at every diner in the state of New Jersey. And I'd say over the next two years or so, we'd go to a diner every few months, and we just for the kicks, we would take the same picture. And then we were down in South Jersey, and at that point, I sort of remembered, you know what, that little idea we had about the diners, Let's do it. When he proposed this, Carrie, what was your reaction? Let me see if I can get off of work. <laughs> Since then, John and Carrie have averaged about two to three diner visits per month, or about 35 per year. For you guys, what constitutes a diner? If it was called a diner, it is a diner. Usually a small business, booths and counters are a must. Breakfast anytime that they're open. That's that's pretty much how a diner's you know, to find. While you'll find lots of menu photos on their Instagram account, NJ Diner Journey, one thing you won't find, reviews. Even on the ones that we may not have had a great experience with, I know a small business owner is busting his rear end and he may be having a bad day. Yeah. And I'm not trashing him on Yelp or on Google yeah. because that's the case. So we, we, we kind of stay away from reviewing them. What's been among your favorite moments doing this? Talking to the waitresses is great. And they all have the personality. Well, I'll call you hun like they did it one that they went to last night. I go, yep, we're at a real diner. Yeah, how does it feel doing something like this? If it's with him, I would do almost anything. Soon enough, lunch was served. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see, you've got a, a wrap. Uh, Gary, you've got a salad. I got grilled cheese with bacon. Is there something you guys always order? Salads. And a tuna sandwich sometimes. And if it's not floppy. The basics, a burger, most of the time, 
wraps, mm -hmm. uh, paninis, like the souvlaki and gyro platters. And before we left, I knew we had to toast to John and Carrie's appetizing adventure. I know you guys, one of the, your traditions is to take a picture with holding the menu of the, of the diner. Can I photobomb with you? Absolutely. Come on over. Macaroni <laughs> and cheese. <laughs> We're back here on The Boost and a woman who describes herself as a very shy person with an appetite for human connection. Well, she decided to use sandwiches to push herself outside of her comfort zone. It really has like restored my faith in humanity. I'm amazed at the nice people that I meet. My life kind of completely got turned upside down. <laughs> for Katie Scar, life started to roll in a different direction, all because of sandwiches. Hi, would you eat a sandwich with a stranger in New York City? AKA me, I am the stranger. That video spread through TikTok, gaining almost 400,000 views. So I decided to go on a sandwich date. Why did you decide to start doing this? I love meeting people, but I'm very, very shy and awkward around a lot of people. Honestly, during the pandemic, I got a little lonely and I felt the need to like push myself to get out and be doing more things. So I just was like, I'm gonna force myself to like go meet new people and randomly decided to put it on TikTok. I had never posted a TikTok before. I had no idea how it even worked. I had no idea what would happen happened, which is that I got like 500 emails in a week. So you get 500 emails. How do you decide which one you were going to answer and, and then go meet that person? Because that's it's not true. something I would tell my kid to do. Yeah, no, that's true. Every single person that emailed me almost, except for maybe like five out of the 500, were genuinely nice people. People would often include their social media information so that I could look them up and see that they were real people. And honestly, I have kind of been following my gut and, and making sure that I'm safe. Since January of this year, Katie's been going on a weekly sandwich date with all sorts of people. My great date, Jabari, is a lawyer. This week we are joined by Jane, meet Vanessa. Jonathan is a great dad. He takes his sons on all kinds of adventures. <laughs> Breaking the ice and bread at a variety of New York City eateries. Who doesn't like a sandwich? Yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, sandwich is a casual. Hey, let's meet up. Let's have a sandwich. I have a sandwich. That's true. There's such a variety of sandwiches. Mm -hmm. They're casual, fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It's like such a low pressure way to meet somebody. 
Have you kept up with people that you've had sandwiches? Yes, I have. I've, I've kept up with all of them to some degree, some more than others. There's a woman that I met that I had no idea when I reached out to her that we work in the exact same office building. So we've we've hung out. I met someone that I'm actually uh, like no. kind of dating in real life. Kind of, kind of dating. <laughs> Hold on, Ricky, come on over here. How did your sandwich date with, uh, with Katie go? That was pretty, I think it will run pretty well. Uh, obviously. So you got a sandwich and you made a love connection. And I made a love connection. So thank you, honey. It's, it's like, can I have a, an extra side of love? Okay, question section. In her TikTok videos, Katie includes a quick interview section with her dates. What is your proudest accomplishment in life? What is your favorite memory from your life? What is currently bringing you the most joy in life? Trying new things. Planning a trip to Ireland. Connecting with people. So I, of course, got grilled as well. What is your proudest accomplishment in life? I would say uh, my kids. They bring me joy. They also suck the life out of me every day, but nothing makes me happier. While connecting with others, Katie has also reflected a lot about herself. I get nervous every single time. I'm convinced that the person is going to not like me or be like, oh, she was not interesting. But I just, my feet walk there, I show up, and, and then everything goes so much better than I thought it would. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're saying, and the sandwich helps, to just show up. <laughs> yeah, just show up in life for anything, like just, just, Get your feet on the ground and show up. <laughs> we showed you our tailgate a little earlier. Well, now Harry Smith takes us inside the game and the kitchen with the New York Giants hidden heroes. New York Giants football practice is all about finding the advantage, the split second, the right move, the repetition that can make the difference between success and failure. Everything matters in pro football, including what you eat. My rookie year, I remember going out to practice, and I had to ask some older guys, hey, what are you eating before practice? Because I don't feel the best right now. Like, I feel slow. I don't have much energy. Julian Love is a team captain and leads the Giants in tackles. Flips it to Tunyon, and Tunyon yanked down by Julian Love. So then that's when they put me on game two, what a true pro is supposed to eat. The Giants' kitchen opens at 5 a.m. every day. It's like the diner of your dreams, except that most everything they prepare has real nutritional value. Very rarely is nutrition going to be the number one reason why you win, but it can become the reason why you lose. Steve Smith is the Giants' director of sports and performance nutrition. Does every player have his own food game plan? That's the ideal goal, but the good part is that the best friend that I could possibly ever have is our kitchen staff because they're basically creating the physical representation of what I'm recommending. Men who have played in the NFL describe the physical toll of a typical game as akin to being in a car wreck, maybe more than one. Giants offensive lineman Nick Gates knows all about it. He showed us scars of what many believed would have been a career-ending injury. It was a Thursday night game, uh, September 16th. And uh, about 11 or 12 plays in, somebody fell on me and uh, snapped my leg in half, broke my tibia and fibula. After the injury, Gates lost 30 to 40 pounds. He needed a lot of calories to get him back to his ideal weight of 312. Eating the right things and eating healthy and not just junk food and, and crappy food to you know put the weight back on. I need a good weight, not bad weight. The head coach in the kitchen is Angelo Bassalone, the Giants' executive chef. He leads a squad of nine. Talk about a cool job. They're long days, but you know, they're, they're fun days. We, we go through a lot of food. A lot of food is a bit of an understatement. 200 pounds of fish, 300 pounds of meat, and 500 pounds of chicken a week. And you're not Chick-fil-A. We're not Chick-fil-A. Is there a meal that you've made that you think makes the difference between winning and losing? As long as they're, they come in here and they're eating and they're happy, that's, that's the most important thing. I was once paid a compliment by one of the players that we made oxtails the one day and he ate them and he's like, this reminds me of my grandmother's. So if you can make that connection, something from home, then I, I won. Chef should have been flagged though for allowing your reporter into the game. What are we making today? 
So today, what we do on travel days often is something quick that they can grab. So we're gonna do a bowl. Uh, we're doing a chimichurri shrimp bowl. Beautiful. No, no, it's not beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's a freaking mess. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. Take a look at that, will you? So you wanna grow up to be an NFL player for the fine dining. Back to the boost. It is time for our favorite time of the day, guys. Take a look at today's morning boost. The job of flower girl is very important. Uh -huh. And if for some reason you cannot carry out those duties, for instance, if your nap time just lands before the ceremony, you better have somebody stepping for you. Charlotte oh, fell asleep girl. just before it's it was so time silly. to walk down the aisle. <laughs> so her security detail was ready to help out. Ceremony went off without a hitch. Uh, Charlotte was well rested, oh. all ready for the reception. Exactly. What a fun show. We hope you guys had a great time celebrating National Food Day. I know we will. And we will see you very well fed right back here tomorrow on Today All Day. These are places we may not be able to visit for a while. Come with us as we take you there, into our incredible world. There are places whose very name reverberates with larger-than-life legends and characters. This road winds through one of those places, Transylvania. The name means land beyond the forest, a mountainous region of Eastern Europe. But what it means to most of us is the blood-soaked story of Dracula. The Vampire Count. Little wonder that in Transylvania, even the graveyards seem more eerie, and my Transylvanian guide, Bogdan Popper, is well versed. It's a piece of superstition that if you have a damaged grave like this one, someone or something may pop out of it. You say that it's just superstition, and yet they found bodies with stakes through the heart. Yes, actually it's a proof that superstitions are very strong. Even Romans feared monsters in this region, yet it was in the 19th century, the era of science, that Bram Stoker dreamed up a tale of terror, telling of a traveler arriving in a mysterious castle in Transylvania. I know what you're thinking. Don't go up there. And high on this ragged mountain, the very castle 
where Bram Stoker imagined Dracula lived. With its sheer stone stairways, dark panelled rooms, there's even a secret passageway. It's the perfect setting to meet the vampire count. I am Dracula. I bid you welcome. They say truth can be stranger than fiction, scarier and bloodier too. Close to the castle back in the 15th century lived a warlord so infamous he had many names. Vlad III, also Vlad the Impaler and Vlad Dracula. The meaning of the name Dracul in Romania, it's the devil. Dracula, it's the devil's son. Historian Matteo Simeon says Vlad was a bloodthirsty killer. He impaled his enemies. The impaler was a nickname that came later with the brutal habit that... Matteo's description of impaling, so how can I put it, vivid, you really don't want to hear it. Would you like to know more? Not really, okay. no. <laughs> 500 years later, the King family from Michigan feels safe. In the day, anyway. Is it scary here? <laughs> <laughs> But at night, according to the story, Dracula goes in search of innocent victims. <laughs> Sunrise. Thank goodness for that. And this morning, we arrive at the medieval town of Sigishwara. So this is where Dracula was born? Yes, he was born in this house. This is where his father used to live. He's born here in 1431. He looks fierce. And though he was a ruthless ruler, someone's left flowers here. He's hugely popular in Romania for being, you know, this kind of cruel but fair ruler. Everyone loves him. Many modern Romanians romanticize Vlad's cold-bloodedness. Vlad the Impaler, Dracula, is their preferred politician. I think everyone would answer with a yes here in <laughs> Romania. <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it, about the true nature of politics and our fascination with brutality and barbarism. It's tomato juice. We're on the road again, on the trail of another fantastic creature that has haunted people's imagination for hundreds of years. Frankenstein. The most dreaded creation of man, the monster of Frankenstein's. Our first stop on the Frankenstein Trail, Switzerland, and the spectacular setting of Lake Geneva. It was here 200 years ago at the Villa Diodati, one rainy night that teenager Mary Shelley dreamed up her tale of terror. It tells of how Victor Frankenstein, using dead bodies stolen from graveyards, created a man. It's alive. And brought it back to life. It's alive! It's alive! And Frankenstein, it seems, like Dracula, may have had a ring of truth. Because shortly before Mary Shelley wrote her book, she had been traveling through Germany where a remote village has a dark history. Can anyone tell me the way to Castle Frankenstein? By the time I reach the castle, it is nightfall. Yeah? Can I come in? Welcome to Castle Frankenstein. Walter Schiele has spent 30 years researching this decaying castle. This is the area Mary Shelley looked around. So she wow. was here. It was once home to a noble family. So these are the Frankensteins. These are the Frankenstein families, and these are their tombstones you see here. And one of them was a real-life mad scientist. So this is him. 
This is, is Johann Conrad Titel von Frankenstein. He's the real father of the monster. This is the guy that Mary Shelley this was writing about. This is the guy about. from whom Mary Shelley knew the story of the monster. The real Frankenstein. The real Frankenstein. This Frankenstein experimented on bodies dug up from a nearby cemetery. He made his experiments with the parts of the bodies and with electricity. And he this tower was the place where the flash of lightning threw in and gave electricity to the bodies. To make the them park. come yes. alive. Like in the movie. Unlike in those classic universal movies, no Frankenstein's monster was ever brought to life. There was no walking dead terrorizing the village. But... A lot of people who live around here, as they say, this is a very bad place to stay during the night. The devil is playing his fools. I don't know, I've never seen him. You've never seen the devil? No, never. Maybe I'm glad I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm the devil for them. <laughs> Good night, my friend. Frankenstein and Dracula, men who became monsters. Why do we find them so fascinating? Our next monster is not human at all. And for that, we have to go to a certain lake in Scotland. On the road north to the rugged highlands, a country of breathtaking landscapes, ancient castles and lakes the Scots call lochs. So this is Loch Ness. This vast loch easily lends itself to legend. A monster? Really? Here at Loch Ness, there have been hundreds of so-called sightings describing a huge and mysterious creature. Up behind us here, a little bit up the loch, 20 odd years ago, sitting beside the loch in my car, and I saw this black hump come out of the water, and I have no idea to this day what it was. He saw an object which he described as like an upturned boat. It turned, went against the headwind, and disappeared. There were nine witnesses. Ancient Celtic legend tells of a beast in the water, and there is a record of an apparent encounter here thousand years ago. But it was during the 1930s that the beast was given a name, the Loch Ness Monster, or more affectionately, Nessie. All over the loch, eyewitnesses described seeing a creature some claimed looked like a prehistoric reptile called a plesiosaur, both in and out of the water. And in one infamous sighting, a couple driving on this road saw a huge creature, maybe 30 feet long, slither in front of them and plunge into the loch. So to understand the lure of the loch, begin with a man who has lived on the shore in a van for almost 30 years. There's, there's a majesty about this place. There's an energy that pours off of here. There's a palpable feeling of, well, it's, it's legend. 
Steve Feltham scans the surface every day for hours at a time. He too says he has seen the monster. It was like a torpedo going through the water, the size of a car going through there. But does Steve think Nessie is a plesiosaur? Nessie could still turn out to be a dinosaur, but at the moment I see it more likely to turn out to be something like a whale's catfish, the biggest freshwater fish in the world. It grows to about four or five metres long. They live for a hundred years. It's got a smooth back, which is what people describe here. The hump, the upturned boat type hump going through the water. How are you doing? How are, How are you? Good, yeah? Hi, nice to meet you. For decades, enthusiasts and even scientists have been searching for facts in this Loch Ness fiction. Skipper Dick Rayner has been investigating the mystery of Loch Ness for 50 years. The thing we were looking for was between 20 and 40 feet long. 40 feet long? Yeah. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. If there is a creature hiding here, Dick says sonar should be the best way to track it down. We're over the deepest part now. Wow, 745 feet. What is that? About halfway down, what is that? It's not a enormous monster appearing on our sonar right there. I don't think so. No. Are you sure? Because that looks pretty... Look, look at that. Over the years, teams of Nessie hunters have used sonar and submarines to search the dark waters of Loch Ness. But the only monster they ever found was this 30-foot Nessie movie prop that sank 50 years ago. Definite fake. Right. Three hay bales covered in tarpaulins. The evidence against there being a monster here has been stacking up. Most of the photos of Nessie are hoaxes. He towed a nice bit of fiberglass behind his boat. But this is the famous one, the iconic picture of Loch Ness. Yes. Right. But what, what people think now is that it's actually this little thing. It's a submarine with a plasticine monster's head on top of it. The last best hope of finding some truth here is perhaps the most bizarrely counterintuitive project of them all. They've been looking for the mythical monster in microscopic particles. That uh, deceptively clear looking water actually contains an abundance of life. An international scientific team led by Professor Neil Gemmel from New Zealand is cracking right. the Loch Ness code using environmental or eDNA. So what we're getting is a snapshot of life in Loch Ness over the last few days. We've got bacteria in there, we've got microorganisms in there. We've also got traces of larger animals. 
fish. And perhaps there's something mysterious in there too that hasn't been described by science. Who knows? You've got quite a bit out of the northern basin. Mm -hmm. With the help of a local naturalist, Adrian Schein, who has studied Loch Ness for more than 40 years, the scientist took hundreds of water samples from all over the loch. Back at his university in New Zealand, the samples were analysed by Professor Gemmel and by several other labs around the world. Their results cross-referenced with a gigantic DNA database, producing a complete picture of everything that lives in Loch Ness. All right, well, thank you. A year after we first met him, Professor Gemmel was ready to announce his dramatic findings to the world. Let's get down to it. Is there a plesiosaur in Loch Ness? No. No trace then, he says, of an ancient dinosaur lurking in the log. No giant catfish DNA either. But, says Professor Gamel, there is one possibility that may explain all those eyewitness sightings here. Could Nessie be a giant eel? There is large amounts of eel DNA in Loch Ness. Now, is it possible that what people are seeing is a giant eel? Well, maybe. It's plausible that there might be one that, that, or two that, that, that grow to extreme size. So, case closed? Well, of course, you cannot know what you don't know. So the mystery of Loch Ness will surely endure, ensuring that the tourists keep coming back. We came to find the monster and, um, we did. you know, we did. <laughs> We've got a sighting here. It might be a giant eel. I don't think so. No? Eels don't have legs. And it is perhaps the mystery, not the monster, that people cannot turn away from, even in this 21st century, which reflects more on all of us than what's in this loch. Lakes are, in a sense, lost worlds, and especially Loch Ness. It's deep, it's dark, it's cold, it's hostile, and it's big. So it gives us the lost world element, but it is also accessible. And I think it's that combination of mystery and accessibility which has given Loch Ness the cachet which it has. It would be a shame, wouldn't it, in a way, if computers and DNA science took away the mystery? Um, well, you never would, you see, because as long as people want to believe in Loch Ness monsters, there'll be Loch Ness monsters. <laughs> When you are here, at dusk, looking out over these dark waters, it's easy to understand why people once feared something lurking beneath. And maybe, even today, we need to believe in monsters and evil so we get to be the good guys. Or perhaps we just like to be scared. Coastal Road is a lesson for us all. 25 years after Chernobyl, another nuclear disaster happened here, Fukushima. 
We're traveling to the heart of a place that visibly demonstrates we humans are entirely capable of making the same mistake twice. It began with nature, the strongest earthquake in Japan's history. The clock on the beach house still frozen in time. First the earthquake struck, then the tsunami submerged this third floor. Destruction doesn't describe it. The deadly wall of water engulfing entire communities. More than 15,000 dead and another 2,500 still missing. The tsunami smashing into Fukushima's power station and knocking out backup generators. Meltdowns and explosions followed. Then the radiation came. I thought someday it was going to happen. And then it happened. Buddhist priest Sadamaro Akano had become concerned about radiation safety, knowing he was living near a nuclear plant. He installed a Geiger counter at his temple. Then his worst fears came true. How did you feel when you saw this? So scared, because this is the first time to raising up the radiation levels. You'd never seen anything like never, this? Never, never ever seen this. This? was Main Street, in the town of Futaba, two miles from the reactor. Once home to almost 7,000 people, it's now a ghost town. Homes abandoned, gardens overgrown. Today, only wildlife live here. The danger is large areas of fields and forests haven't been decontaminated, like this. Our radiation monitor raises the alarm. Levels too high for people to inhabit this place. Former Futaba residents Anthony Ballard and Philip Jellyman have been coming back to the exclusion zone with special permission. Taking pictures. Off Main Street, Anthony shows me where he used to live. So this is home? This was home. When they fled, he left family photos behind. This is Daniel, this is one of my sister's kids. Uh, he's actually at university now. He had made Futaba his home. Now Fukushima has taught him what home really means. Well, that stuff's not important because you can get it's the life that was here before that was important. I can see your, you're in tears. Not quite, but almost, yeah. <laughs> Immediately after the earthquake, people took shelter at the school where Philip taught. They slept on floors, mattresses still strewn around. You can see in this classroom, people's bags have been left behind. Yeah, never to be retrieved. This is now Futaba School, but it's not in Futaba. Some of the students spend an hour to get here. Philip and Anthony teach them English and about home. The children, refugees from the radiation. We travel to the nuclear plant itself for a rare tour. First, we're given personal radiation monitors after the meltdown in 2011, the area was so toxic, workers had to wear hazmat suits. Since then, the plant has been stabilized. It is stunning that I can stand here with so little protective gear on. The melted core of the reactors are just there. Deep inside, this video filmed by robots shows that melted core, still highly radioactive. Outside, our radiation meter measuring 85 microsieverts per hour and more, the highest of our trip. 
safe for short periods. For us to take an even closer look, a little more protection is needed. Are you sure it's safe? Yeah, yeah it's safe. safe. From here, you can still see the scars from 2011. We keep our radiation monitor close. The more immediate problem, the water that is used to cool the reactors, treated but still radioactive, there's enough to fill 400 Olympic swimming pools. They're running out of space. One option, to slowly pour it into the Pacific. It is simply not contaminated water. It's a purified water. So no decision has yet been made, but scientifically, whatever the decision will be, there will be no problem. Many locals are not convinced. Do you think that they should release the water into the ocean? No. They should not? Mm. The local fishermen are just recovering. Every catch is tested for radiation. It's tested, it's safe, and yet you can't help thinking, should I eat it? It's good. The thing that's had the greatest impact on me coming here is perhaps not the devastation that was wrought by the earthquake and then the tsunami, or the fact that now I can walk in this place that was hit by radiation without any protective gear on. It is that the houses and stores in this street that you still see standing are here because the people who owned them wanted to hold on to them. And they wanted to hold on to them because this is home to them. People like 75 year old Katsuhai Dakara. <laughs> We left with only what we were wearing. We initially thought we would be able to go home in three or four days. But sadly, that was not the case. Philip and Anthony visit Okara to deliver photos of his garden, overgrown with weeds. But he is still grateful. The good memories seem like yesterday. Futaba is still my home. A home that the children may one day be able to return to. Do you remember your hometown? Uh, yes. And bring life back to these empty streets. The people who lived here will never forget. And we should all remember, not just that our lives can be irrevocably, catastrophically turned upside down, but that if we truly learn from the past, we can make a better future and a better world. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. Like, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. <laughs> Turn it down. Oh my God, I had one job. None of which I mastered because I didn't know the first thing about how to cook. But those days are behind me for good and I'm finding some confidence in the kitchen. Now, my friend and all-around superstar Drew Barrymore and her chef BFF Pilar Valdez are gonna teach me a few weeknight favorites. We're gonna be making a watermelon salad with pistachio duca and shrimp scampi with bucatini, both from their cookbook, Rebel Homemaker. I am so excited to be cooking with these ladies today, so let's get started. Drew and Pilar, I need to know everything you know. Well, I know that I love you. I know that I love you. She really does, and we're so excited to be here. What's the plan, Pilar? So today's plan, we're gonna cut the watermelon, pickle the rind, prepare the duca, assemble the salad, cook the shrimp and pasta, make the pan sauce, plate, and serve. So first up yeah. for our watermelon salad, we're gonna break down the watermelons. I do love a good piercing, but now of course I'm stuck. Oh, wow, this Boom. Is... Savannah, you're doing great over there. Oh. It's Don't not a competition. Oh, look at the difference between our two heads. <laughs> look at your melons. Oh my gosh. And put the other half That's what I was aside. thinking. Why are we so juvenile? <laughs> When are we going to turn 14? I know. Okay. I see how this episode yes. is going to okay. go. Yeah. You're going to lob off the top of it. 
We're gonna just take off the dark green. Mine doesn't look anything like yours. So does, what Pilar. happened with yours, Drew, is that you didn't. Um, you took off. You were overachieving. You took off the skin and the rind. Um, but our first step was just to do uh, the skin. So Savannah, you can continue on what you were doing and okay. now we're just taking off the rind. So exactly okay. the same kind of oh, okay. sawing and shaving motion downwards. Okay. And now are we keeping it off. this rind? We are, because that's what we're going to pickle, oh. actually. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take your watermelon, and you could cube this, but for this salad, mm -hmm. I actually like to cut it in irregular shapes. I feel good about this part. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, it does. So you're going to take your rind, rind basically, yes. and we're going to uh, dice it. Okay. You're going to flip it over so it has, yeah. Savannah, I can see the claw coming out, which is really good. I'm trying to learn. You want to tuck in those. I like digits. to cut like this. I do too. <laughs> I'm like, I like to off. And this would Thickness. be a dicing, this not is a, a dice. mince. Nope. Because What's it's What's the pretty difference chunky. between dicing and mincing? Size. So the, absolutely. Size, size matters. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip on that. What are we drinking? This is so good, by the it way. Is so what good. is it? It's a mocktail. It's a version of a Pim's. It's based on a Pim's cup, which is usually with gin. But this one oh, is without. Like, well, you would never know there was an alcohol. In here. Oh my gosh. Drew what is loves, that? Very gingery, right? Yeah, so there's ginger beer, and Drew, I know you love tea, so it's a combination of black and rooibos. Okay, that's a very unique flavor. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. So good. All right, so wait, what All do right. we do now? Pickling anything is a flavor profile that I really love. Oh, me too. It is basically uh, equal parts water and apple cider okay. vinegar. So, so Anna, three quarters of that. water. Mm -hmm. Three fourths cup water, three fourths cup apple cider vinegar. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then one you can actually, um, and then one, mm -hmm. exactly. Ooh, I like the honey equal bear. parts um, a lot. Yeah. It's just such an easy brain yeah. yes. ratio to remember. Yes. Yeah. Let's add in uh, the salt. What, are you sprinkling it on purpose? Uh -huh. or are you just trying? <laughs> no, I am because I don't like the dump. It's yeah. like, then you have to work harder to get the solubility. If you shake it in, I feel like it's just a better That's method. actually a very good pro tip. And right. then Drew, I'm gonna have you add in the fennel seed, which is Half on top. Half teaspoon. Half seed. teaspoon of fennel Please. seed. Honey. Lovely. Sprinkle on in. All right, you got crazy. <laughs> Half usually. teaspoon uh, coriander There you go. I'm and we're going to do half a teaspoon of the cumin. Oh. And then the last thing is half a teaspoon of the pink peppercorn. I love pink peppercorn, and I especially love it on green dishes. Yeah. Oh, Savannah, perfect. have you had pink peppercorn? No, I have before? not. So they're really, and you can actually take a little and take a little bite, and they're like very fruity and floral. Oh, yeah, but they're peppery. not super, a little peppery, but not as pungent as a yeah. boss. It's gonna basically come up to a little bit of a simmer. Okay. And as long as the honey and the salt is completely dissolved, then you can pull it off. Drew, you're gonna carefully pour it into our one cup okay, of she water. Too well. Well. She's like, you know that graceful <laughs> ginger side of yourself yes. that you don't have to try to tap into it. Just pouring it right over. Yep. Then what happens? After 30 minutes, this is going to be good to go. It's like so freshness. easy. Super easy. That's pickling. That's pickling. pickling. Boom. Boom.
Now we're moving on to the pistachio dukkha component of our salad. Okay. Dukkha is an Egyptian condiment. It's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds and spices. You okay. should have some coriander, coriander. seed. Mm -hmm. Two, teaspoons Two teaspoons of coriander seed. Okay. Is this, is this the cumin? That's cumin. Okay, mm -hmm. Ooh, absolutely. Going off, oh. going rogue. Okay, then it's She's one, rogue. One now, quarter so cup sesame seeds. Hold, hold on the sesame oh. seeds, actually, Savannah. So you're gonna toast that Can we first. turn it up? How high should it be? Um, let's do medium. Okay, okay, and it's an empty plate. There's no oil or anything. No, absolutely okay. not. You want it in a dry skillet. They have skillet. oils on them, right? Yes, they do. So they're starting to release it. And you just have to shake it occasionally, not okay. constantly. Okay. Um, and you're gonna notice a change in color. They're gonna start to get a little darker, but really what you're looking for, Savannah, is the smell. Okay. It's gonna start to like release this like toasty smell. You're gonna smell the coriander. It's gonna mm -hmm. be very floral. It's starting. Can you smell yeah. it? Yeah. Let's give that a shake, actually. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah. I can. Ooh, I like it. And yes. on the average, would you say about two minutes, Colorado? About two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Take it off, because okay. I can see a okay. little bit of heat. Let's okay. turn oh, yeah. off the Don't pan. Just... Okay. Yeah. Now what? Um, and you're gonna divide actually the spices between your and Drew's mortar and pestle. Habsy, habsy. What I like to do when I have spices is that instead of go in and like bash immediately, I kind of like to muddle, so a circular motion, and that helps it break down because okay. if you go in and you're bashing, it's yeah. gonna like firework spices Okay, so I'm everywhere. like just kind of stirring. So, yep. Can I start smashing yes, now? Yes, I think so. And you can apply a little more pressure to Savannah. Am I trying to get this to like a very fine grain? Pretty, pretty fine. So with the dukkha, we want a little bit of a mm. play on texture, so you'll have fully ground pieces and then some pieces that are just more broken up. I'm mm -hmm. happy with where mine is at. How do you like mine? What do you think? Beautiful. Oh, Lovely. That's good. Good. Yeah. That's and nice. I think you, you guys can both pop uh, your spices, Savannah and Drew, into that bowl. Okay. Into one bowl. Into one okay. bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yours is nicer. I and think. that's really nice because then you guys have a, a texture. Yeah. Yes. Play on I texture. I went hard, you went soft. Oh. Well. So now we're going to toast the sesame seed. Okay, we need one quarter cup sesame seed. So mm -hmm. just let it go in there. Unlike, yeah, you can shake it a little, you can use the spatula. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sesame seeds, as soon as they start to change color, you want to take them off the heat. So keep stirring that, Savannah. They're going to go golden really, really quickly. I can okay. smell them, so I think we're almost there. Okay. And you definitely don't want to burn them. No. Burning bad. Yeah. Okay. Burning bad. <laughs> While Savannah is uh, toasting the sesame seeds, Drew, I'm going to have you add in um, our salt. Our That's flaky a, sea salt. Is this a maldon? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's a One. tablespoon into that bowl where your spices are. I love a maldon. I do too. It's so different I than other salts. I put it on salts. top of my chocolate chip cookie. Yes. yes. Nice. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a little baking skill. And then Drew, you're going to do, um, those are hemp hearts or hemp seeds. Two tablespoons. And hemp seeds. Savannah. Yes, they're really great forms of protein and fiber and vitamins, actually. And again, it's like we're playing a lot with textures. Yeah. So that's a really lovely addition. Your favorite, Drew, half a teaspoon. I would say, Savannah, maybe 30 more seconds on that, and then we're going to be good. Mm -hmm. um, a pink peppercorn okay. and just a smidge, a smidge, smidge, smidge of black pepper. Okay. Smidge. That's more that, than that's a smidge. Plenty. That's definitely more than a smidge. Wow, you have a hot, <laughs> I love hot pepper. spicy tongue. <laughs> Everything okay. could be coated and rubbed in pepper. All right, do you think we're good on these seeds? Let me see. I feel like they're mm. almost there, okay. right? They're almost turning golden. <laughs> um, but we need music. All right, okay. I think that looks really good, Savannah. Okay. So let's uh, turn off the heat. Mm -hmm. Dump them yeah. in? Dump it in. And now we have the pistachios. I can just kind of like Absolutely. do this like Savannah, Julia Child like style. That's great. You're kind of rocking back and forth. Am I making you proud, Pilar? You are making me so proud. This second. <laughs> I'm actually gonna stop you guys right there because I really like the two textures that we're playing with. Okay. Savannah's on like a finer and then Drew's is on a rough. So we're, we've established this a is a really good combo. <laughs> we're gonna scoop all those nuts into this bowl. Scooping the nuts. Yeah. Pretty colors, too. Really, really pretty, yeah. And Drew, you're gonna give it a good mix. No pistachio left behind. There. No pistachio mm -hmm. left behind, please. Okay, that looks amazing. Yeah, and I'm busting out something here that I was told. It's a gold box Savannah's tasting spoons. Do you have special spoons? They're just special because you're supposed to taste your food. Did you know that? I didn't, and now I do. 
So just take a little. Take a little, and and then we can sort of play from there. So mm. it's gonna be, it's gonna have that floral from. I yes. like it. I wouldn't yes. change one thing. Would you? It's it has perfect. enough salt, enough pepper. It, it really, really does. does. <laughs> All right, success, ladies. The love story continues. <laughs> we made duka. We're gonna assemble the salad, but when we're plating it, it's gonna be a little bit of a friendly competition. Ooh. And then. Let's go. You guys got this. <laughs> All right, okay. so in your little jar um, is a simple lemon vinaigrette. Okay. It's just lemon, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. And it's separated a little, so just give them a little shake. Mm -hmm. It emulsifies it, which is there you ever go, so Drew. important. If anyone's doing an oil and vinegar salad, emulsify it first, it'll taste 50 times better. Okay. Wrap in your knowledge. All right, so in your bowl, you have a little bit of arugula. So I like to coat a little bit of the bowl. I know, it sounds crazy, right, Savannah? But You're I'm not gonna use to, all of that. No, so. you don't have to, and you dress the taste, but when you coat the side of the bowl, you're basically not dumping it on the leaves. And then now we can start building. Okay. So, a little arugula on the plate. Remember, oh. you're making something beautiful. Okay. okay. A arugula on the plate. This is where the composition is. Yes. Okay, so and what's our next one? Your watermelon slices, you're gonna dip it in the duka. Oh, dip it in the duka. And however you want to <laughs> dip it is up to you, and you're going to lay it yeah, on you, the plate. You duka you. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So you're just dipping those watermelon slices. And oh, I like to leave a bit of it without the duka, just so that it has that freshness, and then you'll get the pop. Oh, so the some crunch. duka and some don't. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I'm actually asking. I feel like this should be like late night comedy. I know. I know. This is cheesy, like Rodney Dangerfield. By the way, the best. Okay. Here, there's no rules. Okay. Don't forget to finish also with your pickled watermelon rind. You can scatter it around. How can I win? What if I make like a tower? I know. You can totally make a tower. Thinking of tower. Little like Jenga. Okay. And then you can finish with a little bit of Maldon salt also, okay. which just like brings all those flavors together. I learned from a little that. salt bay Maldon salt. Oh, I love it. I don't know. Shall we? Oh, uh, Vogue, <laughs> Vogue for the camera. Yes, last one. I think we know who's his best. It's yours. <laughs> this looks very pretty. Really? It, it really does. I like I your little tower. I feel like they're both they're both pretty. They, I also feel like these are three extremely different, different approaches. <laughs> yeah. You went like just put it on the plate. No, actually, I feel like yours has like a um, a, a, a Lanes, strategic right? pattern. Yeah, no, it does. And yours is sort of abundant, <laughs> and mine is a mound. I love it. All, All right, right, shall Cheers. we? Shall we walk? Yeah. Let, oh, Cheers, let's go. guys.
one of Drew's favorite recipes. Scampi. 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 Who's going to devein and have their way with those shrimp? Well, they actually are already peeled and deveined, although Drew is killer deveining them. <laughs> All right, but we've got the water boiling. We've got the water boiling. Did, did we salt it like the sea? I love that. Say it again, Savannah. I, salt it like the sea. Thank you. Okay. So Drew, what I'm gonna have you do actually is season the shrimp. So that's actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna do just a quarter teaspoon, Drew, and you're gonna sprinkle it all over the shrimp. And the reason why we do baking soda, mm -hmm. I love it, is that it basically helps no the shrimp brown and get this really beautiful color. Oh, okay. And then we're gonna do salt and pepper mm -hmm. on your shrimp. I feel like you should be doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Season it with salt and then we'll uh, give good. it a good toss. I love okay. a little flour, a Look little it, I egg learned. wash. I'm shimmying my salt. No not dumping, dumping over here. <laughs> no, not anymore, I'll never dump a again. Little. So we're gonna let the shrimp that has salt and pepper and baking soda sit for about like five or 10 minutes. And meanwhile, we are going to attack our garlic. Okay. Um, so today we're gonna slice the garlic fine. We don't wanna crush it because that's just gonna burn in our sauce. Mm. So what I like to do is just take the tip off. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of brownness. And you're gonna spin it, we're gonna cut it lengthwise. Not okay. Fast. You have some olive oil. We're gonna do three tablespoons. Happy to eyeball it. There's also a measure if you'd like, but. Well, the, like, I've been encouraged to eyeball. I so I'm gonna try. Eyeball. I think this is. One tablespoon. I think that's good. Two. Yeah. Three. Beautiful. Do you agree? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? That's really, really great. And then you're just gonna rock it. Our baby's all grossed up. <laughs> <laughs> She's eyeballing! I, I eyeballed. Okay. okay. And what you're gonna do, Savannah, is add the garlic. Mm -hmm. Put it right in there? Yeah. You don't want too high of a heat no. and to end up like me who burns their garlic. And okay. Drew, you're gonna add the red pepper flakes. Okay. <clears throat> and having enough oil helps you not burn the garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many? Half a teaspoon, so just that measure. And if you want things spicier, you can go more. You, you know, know she again. does. Miss Spicy over she, she likes. It's gonna start to change color. It's gonna go kind of translucent, translucent. and sticky. I, I have feel it like in... you can start pulling. Okay, um, you do this. So we were just, whoo, um, infusing the olive oil, mm, basically, with that garlic and pepper okay. uh, flavor. Okay. Okay, so what, throw this in? You're gonna throw it in, and then you're gonna give it a good stir. And we're using bucatini, um, which is basically like a, a thicker spaghetti with a hole in it. Okay. Um, but you could use any sort of long shape of pasta, and you're gonna cook that pasta until just all dented, okay. because we're gonna finish it off in the sauce. Okay. Um, do but sauce. you're gonna lay the shrimp down in a single Layer, okay. And you're not gonna stir it. You're gonna shake it, you know, lay occasionally it down. lay it down. Yeah. Actually, will you hold, Savannah? You don't think it's hot enough? Yeah. So stand back. How are you? What are you looking at to there. know if it's so hot enough? So you want a, a little bit of ripple. You do not want smoke. We're not okay. like, trying no. to and no bubble. <laughs> like, let me. You just... want that sizzle, and you're not getting. Oh yeah, it. I'm definitely wanting. I can see it a little bit here. Let me. Can I borrow that? There you go. Here you go. There oh. you go. There you go. Oh. So let's start. Yeah, here interesting. You go. I stepped away. Everything started <laughs> functioning. Meanwhile, my arm is going to fall off. Um, holding these. Oh, uh, yeah. Shrimp. That, you know what? I hear what you're talking about yeah. now, Pilar. Yeah. There's a deck that That's sizzle. why she wanted to hear that. No wonder. Yeah. All right. People always talk about, talk about cooking, you know, like smell and what you can see. I'm mm. always like, I'm like, I can hear my water boiling. I can hear it sizzling. Oh, like, I like that. She brought in the that. strongest sense of them all. <laughs> exactly. The color will start to tell you when pink. it's cooked. It starts to get pink. Its and tails are shrimp. already pink. Yep. Do it's, I need to flip them over ever? Not You know yet. what, let's, I think it's a little too early, but you, let's peek at one and basically the color will have changed and it's gonna have a little bit of like kind of, sp ooh, okay. That was so good to me. A little more. Okay. And you can give the pan a little bit of a light shake but we're not. You like, don't mess with them. Don't not them. Yeah. So Savannah, when you flip them, you're gonna kind of move them to a different. Okay. Uh, They're gonna go a different, different, different spot. There moving you a different go. neighborhood. Yeah, because it does. You know, some stuff will have heat zip spot code change. I know. I'm gonna have you add two tablespoons of that butter. So that's one, one two, two. Beautiful. Just into that pan. Uh, Ooh, now lovely. we're talking. The reason why we put just the two pats of butter right now is that you're basically starting to build that flavor. Right. You touch it with your finger right now, 
You see how firm it is? Yes. Is that a good thing? That is a really good thing. Okay. So we're almost there. So we're just going to rescue the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Take them out? Take them out. Leave the butter in and cook in. Okay. And oh, they're, they're basically like That's almost it. done. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish them off with the pasta and the sauce. Drew, will you actually, speaking of pasta, stir. I've forgotten. Um, please stir it. Test and it. then maybe just uh, try and nude. No, very far. Nowhere All near. Right. All right. Hard as a rock. <laughs> Al dente. Stiff right. as a board. This is like, it's gonna, pencils? Sure. Oh, that's great. So, no, that's, oh yeah. So in this little carafe here, mm -hmm. we have uh, white w wine. Wine, okay. Dump it in. Dump it in, and then you're gonna take your wooden Ooh. spoon. Deglaze? Deglaze. What is deglazing, Savannah? Scraping the nasty bits off the bottom. <laughs> the yummy yes, bits. The, I know, the flavor bits. Yes, absolutely. I did learn a deglazing. I um, love that. Totally. All right, you're gonna do, um, not the all that butter, actually. You're gonna do four more tablespoons, basically. One, yeah. two. Oh, look yeah. at you eyeballing Three. it. Yes. That's impressive. Four. All right, and that goes into the pan. Look at Yeah. This is hey, right here. Duty. This is graduate school. <laughs> We're gonna dump in the cooked garlic, all that oil, and mm. the chili. We're gonna let this go. I want you guys to taste it. Where it is? There's Savannah's golden oh, the box. Golden spoon. But you so have there's one. no lemon yet. It tastes lemony to me now. Really? Oh, from the white wine, right? Oh. And that's gonna reduce in color. Oh my! What God, do you think? Oh, it's incredible! <laughs> I'm actually just gonna come in. Mm -hmm. What's and this, lemon juice? So it's two tablespoons of lemon. We're not gonna do all of it because I wanna do kind of to taste. Mm -hmm. So let's start there, okay. I think. What do you think over there? Oh, that, that, that. No, not that. Still not that. Well, actually, I'd like Pilar to test this because- Happy to. Noodles keep cooking. Yeah, and, and we're gonna finish it off in the sauce as well. So this maybe might something. actually be almost Pretty good. there. Mm -mm. Still one more minute. Yeah. Yeah. Almost there. Should I turn it down so more? Yeah, let's turn it's that really down. It's really going crazy yeah. here. And how's that here sounding now, Pilar? <laughs> yeah. Now we got That's it That's the sound I want. I like to pick herbs too for like yeah. salads, but oh. for something like this, I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Okay. So you want to get it again. What'd like, you do? Did you cut off the stems? I put the stems underneath. So I cut oh. them, cut the stems. Mm -hmm. See, it, by the way, I'm oh. grabbing this like before this? Yeah. I forget everybody. And then tuck them so under it, it oh. basically. Oh, she's saving her pasta water. <laughs> oh, I like your today show theme. Pasta water. Okay, and then I put the stems under. So, yeah. So yes. I know it's uncomfortable, but yeah. just like, you okay. can go slow. And you're going to do a rough Because it's ready. Drew reports that the pasta is All right. Okay. And Savannah, you're gonna start putting that pasta in. Mm -hmm. And it's Ooh. totally fine that it has the liquid because yeah, that's just gonna make a, a, a nicer emulsified sauce. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, this is, looks right? incredible. And I think you do need a little bit more of pasta water, Drew. Would you oh, think? Just, aren't you just glad a you little, saved it, a Drew? A little bit, a touch. Give me a little splash. That's okay. great. Wow. Yeah. And is the shrimp just the very last thing I put on there? Yes. I like this big old skillet yeah. too. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Makes me feel like a real chef. Um, Savannah, you're gonna kill the heat. Okay. Done. And then you're gonna garnish with your chopped parsley. Right in the bowl, huh? Right in there. And I don't wanna go crazy, right? Just a little like that? Just a, just a little for color and then okay. you can give it a toss again. It's, with the, the shrimp oh gosh, is. This looks so good. Perfect. <laughs> like wow. it's ridiculous. And Perfect. how are we gonna plate it? We got a bowl for okay. you. Now, okay. This, part, this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, Cause this thing weighs six billion pounds. Ow, watch out, watch out. Okay, look, I think we did pretty good. Cool. Oh, yes. I think we did perfect. Look at it. Wow, and then you By can the way, roll. I feel like you should lie in King Yacht now. <laughs> the ball. Oh! <laughs> wow. And then you can serve it with a little bit more fresh parsley, chili flake, okay. lemon. Okay, garnish. Love it, garnish it up. Just a little bit. We, yeah. we chopped those, let's go. Yeah. Guys, Shall we? let's chow down. Ah! Let's do it.
Yeah. Oh, How so beautiful tall. does this look? I mean, this is our garden party. It's so pretty. It is really, shall we? Yes. Okay. Please. My first Dooku. I've never had a Dooku before. Dooka. The Dooka. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. You really get those spices. You do. It's delish. In the back of the palate and through the nose. Mm. But mm. it's so cold and refreshing. Also, right? And then you have the pickle that comes through that is just like I a little it. floral. Listen, I love that pickle rind. Yeah. I never knew I could feel that way about a watermelon rind. I'm really excited that you're saying that. Me too. That to this is a whole new world for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So I want to show you um, some people call it a nest. Um, I'm really going to focus on the pasta. If I catch a little shrimp so in there, for you. I catch a little shrimp in there. So be it. What are we doing? We're going to make a little round ball. Well, you're supposed to make a pasta nest, but this is not working. And then oh. my tongs also won't go all the way to the. God darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you know what will really help? Let what? me try this again. Let me get it with a fork. Okay. Because that. Um, like a fork skull. I feel oh. like this is gonna, yeah. yeah. There oh, you go. should work much nicer. Do you want to nest There me? you go. I want to nest you. Okay. Oh, that's so pretty. And then you just kind of dip the ladle. There you go. Oh my gosh, fancy pants. And then you pants. can unfork it. And then a little bit of shrimp. You're so classy. <laughs> Here. Thank there. you, yeah. Third All right, time I need a third, charm. Third time's a charm. I believe in you, Drew. Okay. So. Let's see. I oh, no, you're down. nesting. Oh, there That's you your go. best nest yet. There you See? go. See, third time's the charm. Oh, and that then... is beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm chowing down. I can't wait yes, anymore. Yes, yes. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. You guys cooked that shrimp, like, perfectly. The shrimp came out real good. Real right? money. Yeah. Perfect. I agree. Money shrimp. Proud of us. And that like little pop from the shrimp, mm. too, that baking mm. soda like really affects the texture, so it feels like super fresh. It does. Ladies. I'm so proud of us. Can we raise a glass? To your friendship. To your friendship. To your friendship. Cheers. Hi, everybody. Good Tuesday morning. A small glimmer of hope in the war. Yeah, two more hostages released.